President-elect Ramon Magsaysay in 1953 held so much promise. With his country only seven years out of the war, Filipinos felt that he was the leader who truly represented the masses and would direct the country's growth. He was young, his energy was boundless, and his commitment to serve the people was unquestionable. I believe that the president should set the example of a big heart, an honest mind, sound instincts, the virtue of healthy and patience, and an abiding love for the common man. Magandang araw sa lahat. Uh, ako ay nagpapasalamat sa Ramon Magsaysay Award uh, Foundation sa inyong pagpili sa akin at pagbigay ng isang pinakamalaking karangalan sa uh, bilang mangingisda. At ito ay inaalay ko sa aking pamilya, sa mga taong tumulong, sa mga uh, institusyon at mga ahensya ng gobyerno na tumulong sa aking uh, asosasyon o sa aming programa. At ito yung lahat din. Ito ay inaalay natin sa ating mga kasamahang mangingisda, lalong-lalo na sa mga maliliit na mangingisda sa buong Pilipinas. At uh, dahil dito ay uh, ating pang pagbutihin uh, uh, at palakasin ang ating mga programa at sana at sa pamamagitan nito mas lalong makilala at suportaran ang ating mga programa bilang maliliit na mangingisda sa Pilipinas. At uh, ako yung papasalamat ulit sa lahat ng mga bumubuo ng Ramon Magsaysay, Magsaysay Award Foundation sa pagbigay sa ating ng napakalaking karangalan. At uh, magandang araw sa lahat at mabuhay tayong lahat. The Ramon Magsaysay Transformative Leadership Institute Online Lecture Series featuring the 2021 Ramon Magsaysay Award from the Philippines, Roberto Cado Doy Balion will begin shortly. We would like to remind our audience of the following. The video and audio functions of the audience will be disabled throughout the whole lecture. For questions and comments, we encourage everyone to use the Q&A tab and chat platform of the webinar. We will accommodate as many as relevant questions during the session. Please always be respectful in the chat room and the Q&A tab. We invite everyone to follow the Ramon Magsaysay Award on social media. You will find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Just search for Magsaysay Award. We invite you to check our brand new website, www.rmaward.asia, for more information on the Ramon Magsaysay Award this year. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. We will begin the program in a few minutes. Welcome to the Ramon Magsaysay Transformative Leadership Institute Lecture Series featuring the 2021 Ramon Magsaysay Awardee Roberto Cado Doy Balion. Please welcome to your Zoom read the President of the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation, Ms. Susan B. Apan. Thank you very much, Marie. Governor Wilter Palma of the province of Sambuanga, Sibugay, Mayor Katrina Balyadares of Cabasalan, Sambuanga, Sibugay, past Ramon Magsaysay laureates, 
the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation Board of Trustees, officers from various government agencies, our friends from the development sector, and of course, naman, the officers and members of Kapunungan ng Gagmay Mangingisda ng Concepcion. Ladies and gentlemen, magandang hapon. Good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation, I thank you all for joining us in this afternoon's lecture series featuring 2021 Ramon Magsaysay Awardee, Kadodoy Balyon. Your presence is testament that there is really clamor and hunger for inspiration in today's world especially in protecting our seas and in helping the plight of fishermen in the Philippines and in Asia. Our lecture series is a unique highlight of the Ramon Magsaysay Award Festival season that dates back all the way to the first ceremonies in 1958. So that's about 63 years ago. Through these inspiring dialogues with the Magsaysay laureates, the public is given an opportunity to learn about the transformative solutions that make our societies better. Discovering transformative leadership. And this afternoon, we're going to find this example in a very obscure and humble place. It comes from a quiet fishing village in Sambuanga, Sibugay. Friends, we promise you a very, very inspiring afternoon. So hold on to your seats. Stay with us, okay, through the whole afternoon because I'm sure you're going to get inspired. So for now, I would like to introduce the panelists, starting off with Professor Randy David, who is a trustee of the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation. He is also a very well-known leading Asian public intellectual. He became the 2019 first Filipino to receive the prestigious Fukuoka Grand Prize Award, where he plays a dynamic part in achieving social justice in the Philippines by sharing his knowledge as a sociologist widely through university education, TV programs, and newspaper columns, and he has really made great effort to promote academic and cultural exchanges among Asian countries in order for everybody to deepen their mutual understanding. And so today, we at the foundation are really truly blessed to have him not just in our board, but with us this afternoon. We are all fortunate that he can join this webinar and he will also provide the synthesis for today's session. So, Prof. Randy, hello and welcome. Hi, Susan. Thank you. Joining Randy as well is our 2021 Magsaysay awardee from Sambuanga, Sibugay, who has now become a real good friend of the foundation. Kadodoy, magandang hapong po. Kumusta? Magandang araw, magandang hapon sa lahat. Okay. So, si... Kadodoy, whose full name is Roberto Balyon, is a fisherman from southern Philippines who has led a community in restoring the rich aquatic resources and the primary resource of livelihood. He is the chairman of Kapunungan ng Gagmay ng Mangingisda sa Concepcion, or KGMC. This year, Kadodoy has been elected to receive the Ramon Magsaysay Award for his inspiring determination in leading his fellow fisher folk to revive a dying fishing industry by creating a sustainable marine environment for his generation and generations to come, and his shiny example of how everyday acts of heroism can truly be extraordinary and transformative. So ladies and gentlemen, Again, please welcome 2021 Ramon Magsaysay Awardee, Roberto Cadodoy Balion. 
And joining me in this first part of the webinar is Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation Director, Carmencita Toledo, who will help facilitate this afternoon's lecture. Chiclet, may I please turn over the floor to you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Susan, and welcome everyone. Magandang hapon, Kadodoy, at sa lahat ng KGMC members, sa lahat po ng uh, nandiyan ngayon sa Kabasalan. And welcome to all our uh, audience who joined this webinar. Before we proceed with Kadodoy's lecture, please allow me to briefly give you a snapshot of this afternoon's proceedings divided into four parts. First, our Magsaysay Laureate. Kadodoy will present to us his public lecture on environmental protection and community leadership, and it will be pre-recorded. Immediately following that will be reactions from our invited panelists. They will be sharing their own insights on the issues that Kadodoy will touch on, among other things. We have invited three other panelists to join uh, Professor Randy and Kadodoy later. And finally, of course, part of the program is our open forum and question and answer where the public, you, our audience, here in the Zoom webinar and in our various live streaming platforms in uh, Facebook and YouTube, you can ask your questions for Kadodoy and also to our panelists. You may use, of course, the Zoom's Q&A tab, the chat box, or the comment section of Facebook and YouTube. Or for those of you who are now here in the webinar, you may raise your, your hand, your digital hand on Zoom, and we will elevate you to the panelist status so you may ask your questions directly to the panelists on air. All right, I think we can begin. Game na, Kadodoy, you're ready, okay. As you know, uh, Wi-Fi and internet connection is so unpredictable these days. So we have requested Kadodoy to pre-record his public lecture with the help of his very good friends from the from SAISFI, from a Saver Agricultural Extension Service Foundation. But Kadodoy will always be there. You will join us all the way from Zambanga Sibugay for the open forum after the lecture. Okay, I think we are ready to hear the message from our community leader all the way from Zamboanga, Sibugay. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the 2001 Ramon Magsaysay Awardee, Roberto Cadodoy Balion. So I am uh, Roberto Balion. Tawagin nyo lang akong Cadodoy, ang chairman sa Kapunungan sa Gagmay Mangingisda sa Concepcion or uh, KGMC. At ang aming uh, lugar, ay, ang aming munisipyo ay Kabasalan, Uh, Sambuanga, Sibugay. At ito yung aming uh, journey. Nagsimula kami sa isang maliit na organisasyon o kapunungan sa Gamay Mangisda sa Concepcion noong 1986. At ang aming programa na uh, para batupad yung aming mga uh, vision mission ay may tatlo kaming iniikutan programa. Una ay yung people empowerment. Yung people empowerment, uh, panatilihing uh, malakas at matiba yung aming organisasyon sa pamamagitan ng mga training, capacity building, mga seminars na binibigay sa amin ng gobyerno at ng iba't ibang partners ng mga NGO, academe at iba pang mga uh, institusyon. At ang pangalawa ay yung aming uh, environmental protection. Yung pangangalaga sa kalikasan, pagbabalik uh, ng mga nawawalang mga iba't ibang ori, ng mga likasyama ng aming karagatan at ng aming kapaligiran sa dagat. At ang pangatlo ay yung pagbubuo at pagtatag ng mga sustainable livelihood o yung mga pangkabuhayan na siya makatutulong at siya yung Uh, makapag-ahon sa aming sa matinding kahirapan bilang mga malilit na mangingisda na naninirahan sa mga baybayan ng Sambuanga uh, Sibugay. So ang mangrove para sa amin ay isa siyang subline uh, agency ng gobyerno na siyang nagbibigay ng mga tulong. Halimbawa, mga kabuhayan, pangangailangan sa aming pamamahay, panangga sa aming mga uh, malalakas na hangin, uh, malalakas na alon, at mga pagbaha. At uh, ang pinakamaganda dito ay nagbibigay siya araw-araw sa amin ng malinis na hangin, tubig, at mga, mga masasarap na mga pagkain na nakukuha sa loob ng mangroves. Yun ang ginagampanan din ng ating Lainagesis Gobyerno. Bakit importante sa amin yung mangroves? Ito kasi ay sa aming eksperyensya uh, sa araw-araw, ito ay nakikita namin na ito yung mga tirahan ng ating mga uh, iba't ibang ori ng ating mga uh, lam lamandagat, mga iba't ibang ori ng mga marine biodiversity at uh, ito siya ang nagiging 
uh, pananga o pinagkukuna ng mga pagkain ng mga iba't ibang ori ng isda sa loob ng aming karagatan. Sa amin naman mga tao, uh, at ito ay nagbibigay sa amin ng mga uh, kabuhayan kasi diyan kami sa loob ng mangroves na, na nangunguha ng aming pang-araw-araw na pangangailangan. So pag wala kaming mga uh, ginagamit o wala kaming uh, panggastos o wala kaming kita, pumupunta kami sa loob ng mangroves at doon kami kumukuha ng mga aming uh, iba't ibang uh, pangangailangan para sa aming kabuhayan. Tulad ng mga alimango, uh, mga uh, lamang uh, dagat, mga isda, mga shellfish, mga talaba, mga tagnipis, lahat ng mga kailangan namin. Dati may mga minahan doon sa, sa taas ng aming mga kabundukan ay nagkaroon ng contamination dito sa pamamagitan ng ng mga research ng ating taga-guberno na mayroong mga mercury dito sa aming uh, katubigan. Nang dahil sa mga mangroves, ay, ito ay na nasasala at na-purified yung tubig. How mangroves protect communities from uh, climate change? So ito ngayon ang maganda nangyari kasi ang mangroves mula sa bundok, ito siya ang nagiging uh, first uh, line of defense namin tuwing uh, bumabaha o ano nangyari sa taas. So ang bago dumating yung mga tubig o mga anong chemicals nang galing sa mundo, papuntang dagat, siya yung nagiging first line of defense kasi nasasala siya. Pag dito naman galing sa mga storm surge, magmula doon sa coral, sa, sa sigrasis, siya yung last line of defense namin uh, sa mga storm surge sa malalakas ng mga alon o hangin. How can uh, fishing communities protect the uh, mangroves? So, una, ay, ang ginagawa namin ay mayroon kaming mga education campaign na ginagawa. Uh, yung mga tao ay uh, palaging uh, nagbibigay kami ng mga uh, forum, ng mga meeting, pinapaabot sa kanila. Uh, kung mawawala yung mangroves, so anong maging epekto? Mga more education campaign sa mga tao para ipaalam sa kanila ano yung dulot kung mawawala o hindi natin mapaprotektahan yung mangroves? Ininkaris namin yung mga tao na sumali sa pagtatanim ng mga mangroves. At kami mismo din sa KGMC, isa nga sa mga paraan namin dito ay taon-taon tatanim kami ng mga uh, mangroves. So, isa din sa mga ano, paraan ay minimonitor talaga namin yung status ng mga mangroves para mawala yung mga illegal uh, cutting. So, at uh, tinataniman yung mga nakatiwawang na walang mga tanim na mga mangroves. Ang isang uh, uh, magandang ginagawa kasi namin, so ang community kasi kami sa KGMC ay nagbubulunter kami bilang mga bantay dagat. So mga bantay dagat namin, kasama namin yung mga uh, PNP, yung mga barangay officials kami mismo sa KGMC sa tulong ng local government unit. So ang maganda kasi ang bantay dagat ay uh, ano yan, uh, dinideputize at binibigyan ng mga capacity or training, papaano ang magiging bantay dagat. Ang mga area ay nagkaroon kami ng uh, tinatawag na mga tenorial uh, instrument. Yung, nagkaroon kami din ng mga batas na yung mga mangroves kailangan uh, masunified. At isa sa ginagawa din namin na uh, lahat kami ay talagang inobliga namin o uh, tinuturoan yung mga tao na sumunod sa batas uh, patungkol sa paano pangangalaga ng mangroves. Katunayan nga isa sa mga strategy namin Uh, yung mga membro natin na nangangailangan ng ating mangroves para pang bahay o panggatong nila so mayroon kami mga designate na mga area na kung saan lang sila pwedeng kumuha at yung mga sanga, 5 to 10 years old na mga mangroves, so doon sila pwede nilang putulin, pero bago nila putulin yon ay kailangan muna magtanim sila ng mga sampong uh, similya ng uh, mangroves, kapalit doon sa pinutol nilang sanga, at yon ay mayroon kaming sampo hanggang 20 Uh, hectares na lawak, tawag namin doon ay proper or sustainable utilization para hindi kung saan-saan lang magnakaw yung mga member. Hindi naman pwede na uh, lahat na lang ay uh, bawal pero kailangan talaga mayroon sustainable na paggamit. So after 20 years uh, mahigit na journey ng aming association, nakapag uh, reforest kami ng uh, nasa 1,000 mahigit na mga uh, mangroves at nakapag-protect kami ng mga More or less, mga 900 hectares of mangroves within uh, the Kabasalan area. Uh, 60 hectares of uh, dominant species dito na ang tawag ay pagatpat. So isa din sa nagawa namin ay nakapag-develop kami ng mga mangrove nursery, uh, innovations and techniques, katulad ng uh, seed propagation sa pagatpat na instead dati na mangunguha lang tayo ng mga seedlings doon sa wild. Ngayon ay hindi na ganun kahirap dahil nakapag-develop uh, kami ang nakapag-imbinto ang isang teknik na mula sa buto, ginagawa siyang seedlings, tapos galing nursery at ilang 
nasa tatlo hanggang anim na buwan, ay pwede na siyang itanim doon sa area. Yun nga, uh, dahil uh, dati ang ginagawa natin, uh, tuwing magtatanim tayo, yung wala pang strategy na yan na uh, seed propagation, ay mababa lang yung survival natin, nasa 30 hanggang 40%. Pero dahil sa strategy na ito, itong mangrove uh, suniracia alba uh, propagation techniques, ay naabot na natin sa uh, 90 hanggang 100% yung ating survival after uh, outplanting. Uh, para magkaroon ng uh, sustainability yung aming ginagawa, ay nagde-develop kami ng na next generations namin o nagpo-form kami ng mga next generation mangrove protectors. Ito yung mga anak namin ay sinasama namin sa aming mga gawain, mangrove uh, reforestation. Tuturo kami sa mga uh, kabataan, doon sa mga eskwilahan, dito sa mga barangay. Ang magandang nangyari talaga ay kami yung strong uh, partners uh, ng LGO in terms sa uh, uh, implementation ng fishery ordinance dahil ka, uh, kami mismo ang uh, nagtuturo saan ba talaga pwede kung saan yung mga sunification area at magkano lang talaga ang kaya naming bayaran mula noon nang hindi pa maipasa kasi yung batas. So mababa lang ang koleksyon ng, ng aming munisipyo ay nasa umabot lang mahigit 1,000 ng isang taon. Then after may pasa namin yung batas na yun, tumaas, umabot ng 300,000 mahigit ang koleksyon namin sa isang taon. Isa sa naging uh, mantra o prinsipyo talaga namin, yung aming fishing ground, yung aming fisheries uh, habitat, yung aming mga mangroves, tinuring na talaga namin na bangko namin. Dahil sa siyudad pala, yung mga tao, yung may mga pira, ay pumupunta sila sa bangko. Doon sila nagwi-withdraw, doon sila nagdi-deposit. Pero kaming mga mangingisda, mahirap na mangingisda, wala kami talagang bangko. Ito lang talaga ang bangko namin. Itong aming mangroves, itong aming dagat, na kahit anong oras, pwede kami mag-withdraw. Withdraw lang ng withdraw. Nakaligtaan namin noon ang yung bangko pala, kung doon sa siyudad, ay pag wala ka na i-deposit, so wala ka rin withdraw so wala ka rin interest. So itong dagat ngayon, itong ginawa din namin ganon, bangko. Na kailangan talaga namin kung nag-withdraw kami araw-araw, dapat magdi-deposit din kami para uh, magkaroon siya ng interest. Halimbawa, pagdi-deposit namin tulad na pagtatanim ng mga mangroves, yung paghinto ng aming mga illegal fishing, yung mga pagsunod sa batas, yun ang mga isang pagdi-deposit namin. So nagkaroon ng maraming interest yung pagdami ng isda, yung pagdami ng mga alimango, uh, yamang dagat. So, yun ang nagiging interest at yun ang walang kaubusan na withdraw namin. So, yun yan ang nagiging prinsipyo talaga namin. At isa pa doon, yung community pantry, isa din yan natutunan namin, yun yung dagat pala, isang malaking community pantry. Dahil nagwi-withdraw kami doon, o oh, nakukuha lang, ayon lang sa aming pangangailangan. At nagbibigay din kami, ayon lang sa aming kakayahan, yung pag-establish ng mga uh, marine protected areas, yun nga, yung pag, uh, pangangalaga ng ating mangroves na ayon sa ating kakayahan. Yun ang nagiging magandang a uh, prinsipyo namin sa KGMC bilang mga mangingisda. At uh, dahil sa aming magandang practice, itong aming uh, mangrove nursery uh, pagatpat uh, propagation, ay nakita ng isang uh, institusyon na partners namin, itong Forest Foundation Philippines na PTFCF dati, na napakaganda at napakayaman na, na technology na nanggaling sa amin na mga mangingisda. Kaya pinunduhan nila ito. At nagkaroon kami ng isang guidebook papaano magtanim ng isang uri ng mangroves tulad ng seed propagation o yung pagatpat species na napakadali lang magpadami o magpabuhay ng isang uh, mangroves dahil sa teknolohiya na ito. So isa din sa mga nagawa namin, mga illegal cutters at mga illegal uh, fishers ay na-organize into uh, fisher folk organizations na dati pag na Nahuli kasi natin sila instead na ipakulong natin. So, tinuturoan natin sila, dinadala doon sa ating opisina na uh, sinasabihan sila at uh, hindi dapat, hindi maganda yung mga ginagawa ninyo. Instead na ipakulong natin sila, so inorganize natin sila. Association ngayon, sila na yung mga uh, beast protector, beast planters, beast uh, bantay dagat. At isa rin sa mga nagawa namin, we have uh, mobilized the community uh, uh, fisher folk. Uh, sa pamamagitan ng uh, pira basura. Nagkaroon kasi kami ng programa na mamanage yung aming mga solid waste. Ang ginagawa namin doon ay nagbibigay kami ng mga sako-sakong mga lalagyan doon sa mga membro namin sa household at pag napuno yan, nabigyan namin, binibigyan namin ng raffle ticket and after 3 months, so nira-raffle namin at ang yung mga premyo ay mga bigas, mga groceries at mga kitchen utensils. At dahil sa pamamaraang ito, mismo ang aming uh, munisipyo ng Kabasalan 
ay nakiging crown winner sa National Nutrition Council dahil sa pamamaraang ito. At ito ngayon ang gusto namin mapailaganap sa iba pang mga lugar. Sa, sa kasalukuyan ay nagbibigay kami ng mga breeders o nagdudunit sa iba't ibang uh, lugar sa Pilipinas, mga private at mga government uh, hatchery para makapag produce ng mga similya ng lapu-lapu para maibigay sa amin o sa iba pang mga uh, mga isda. Iba pang uh, accomplishment namin ay dapat yung mga anak natin ay makapag-aral para maibsan yung uh, kahirapan dito sa lugar, yung mga anak natin talaga pag-aralay natin para alam nila yung uh, uh, papaano magiging resilient. So ang ginawa namin, nagkaroon kami ng isang programa na mga scholars sa tulong din ng iba't ibang partners, isang partner namin dun yung Uh, naawan State uh, uh, University yung sa, sa, sa fisheries so, at sa tulong din ng Head Foundation. At sa mga scholars na ito ay mayroon dalawang nagraduate na cum laude fish, uh, BS Fisheries. So dagdag pa na nagawa namin sa aming grupo ay yung pagkakaroon ng uh, savings club. Tinuturoan kasi namin yung aming mga membro na hindi araw-araw na may pira tayo sa pagdating ng mga kalamidad so dapat may naipon tayo sa katunayan ngayon mayroong kaming pitong savings club group mayroong kaming apat na adults uh, savings club group mayroong kaming uh, tatlo na youths and children savings club group at itong taong 2021 itong pitong savings club namin ay nakapag-generate kami ng uh, 1.6 million isang maganda itong mangyayari dahil ito yung resiliency sa panahon ng mga kalamidad o pagbaha, kagad-agad kami ay yung una nakapag-respond sa aming uh, community. So isa pa din sa mga nagawa na ay nakapag-provide kami ng additional uh, livelihood sa aming mga grupo. So isa din sa mga nagawa namin ay nakakaroon kami ng mga sistema na instead na yung lugar ay mag invite kami ng mga uh, kapitalista or mga investors. So ang ginawa namin kami sa organization, kami mismo yung unang nagig investors ang tawag namin doon sa system na yon ay patak-patak. Sa ngayon, uh, we are considered as benchmarks ng mga iba't ibang uh, institusyon na dahil uh, uh, maraming mong bibisita dito. So recently, ay nakapag-develop kami ng uh, Kabasalan Marine Ecotourism Development Plan dahil sa aming uh, maganda pangangalaga sa aming coastal uh, Area. May isa rin kami project sa water system na, binibig, na binigay ngayon bago lang ng uh, Fish and Equity uh, Foundation. At ngayon ang probinsya din ay tumutulong sa amin at uh, gustong magpatupad ng mga programa na align kung ano ginawa ng KGMC, yun dapat din asundin nila. Ng other coastal municipalities within Sambuanga, Sibugay. So bakit kami nagtagumpay ang KGMC? Yon dahil ay sa mga partners. Isa din sa mga rason kung bakit nagiging successful yung implementation namin ang dahil sa soft uh, enforcement namin na uh, hindi ho namin kaagad yung mga tao o yung mga illegal uh, activities ay uh, instead na ipakulong ay pinangaralan muna namin at uh, inorganize. Binigyan namin sila ng mga livelihood uh, assistance. Then after na mabigyan na namin sila ng mga ganong mga capacity building at mga assistance at Uh, pag gumawa pa rin sila ng mga illegal activities, ayun na uh, gumagamit kami ng hard implementation. Yun na talaga na kinakasuhan na namin sila at papunta na doon sa minumultahan at hanggang sa pagkakulong. Ang aming mga pananaw o vision ay magkakaisa at pareho lang. Tulad kahit mga Muslim, uh, Christian at IPs kami, pero isa lang talaga ang aming uh, vision, mission goals. Yung magkaroon kami ng 3 Ano yung 3 na yun? Uh, Tagalogin natin, Agahan, tanghalian, hapunan, Englishin natin. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. How many eight is that? Oh, di, three eight. Yun ang common vision namin. Karoon kami ng track record dahil recognize kami uh, local, locally, uh, national at international. Kaming nasa KGMC ay mga religious uh, na community kami. Uh, naniniwala talaga kami na itong aming Uh, kapaligiran itong aming kalikasan ibigay talaga ito sa amin ng aming Panginoon at dapat lang pangalagaan namin ito at respetuhin. Mayroon kami mga uh, champion leader uh, champion community so ang, ang mga challenge namin ay isa na dito ay yung may mga ilan mga taga gobyerno mismo na uh, ayaw nilang suportaran talaga ang uh, coastal resource management program attitude ng mga tao yung um, Uh, wait and see. 
Uh, maniniwala lang pag may nakikita at may nangyayari na. Pero ang pinaka uh, malaking challenge sa amin ay itong uh, disaster, uh, the impact of the uh, climate change sa ngayon. Lalong-lalo na kami sa mamangisda, kami yung pinaka uh, vulnerable sa impact ng climate change. At ang isa pa dito ay dahil nga sa aming ginagawa, so dumarami nga ang isda, pero ay yung uh, fishing pressure naman ay medyo nakaka- Uh, challenge yan dahil dumarami rin yung mga mangingisda sa ngayon na pumupunta at na nangunguha lang sa aming karagatan. Ito yung re realization ko. So, kailangan natin talaga magiging uh, ipagpatuloy talaga yung education uh, sa mga tao. Uh, kailangan magiging uh, ed educated sila. Ano nangyayari ngayon sa ating kapaligiran lalong-lalo sa karagatan at sa ating mga mangroves. Uh, pangalawa yung Uh, support talaga ng familia ko sa akin, uh, ng ating familia ay napakahalaga. At uh, yung walk the talk. And, and I realize na itong ginagawa ko talaga at ng aming community ay nasa tamang daan kami at ito ay tama, hindi ito kabaliwan. At dahil uh, nakikinabang kami at uh, nakilala na at narecognize kami, dapat nating suportaran yung ating mga fishing community sa Pilipinas. Dahil ang ating pangisdaan ay pinakamayaman. Pero bakit kami mga sektor na mangingisda ay ang pinakamahirap? Maraming uh, salamat sa ating lahat at mabuhay. Maraming salamat po. Kadodoy, wow! Did you feel the passion of Kadodoy? Miss Susan, what can you say? Very impassioned lecture. No, and sabi nga, this is the man that just not talks, but actually walks the talk. Araw-araw, mm -hmm. um, pinapanindigan niya yung kanyang sinasabi. But what's also nice about the whole thing is he's not doing it alone. Sinasama niya yung buong community. And now, he is also inspiring other communities, not just in the Philippines, but in Asia, to also mm -hmm. do the same. Sometimes mm -hmm. dreaming, dreaming is not enough or intention is not enough. Kadodoy has shown us that action, action, and the ability to get people together is the key to his, to, you know, to his and the community's success. Talagang collaboration. Kadodoy, kung nababasa ninyo ngayon, if you're able to read the chat box, napakarami na pong nagko-congratulate sa inyo at nagpapakita ng suporta dahil napakaganda po ng mensahe ninyo. Your message It's very beautiful and it, it affects all of us. And it oh. can be an oh. emotional thing. Oh, kadodoy. Yeah. Oh, tsaka oh. chiclet, ka, kadodoy, gusto gusto ko yung three eat. Di ba yung three eat? Napakadali nga naman yun. Ano ba naman? Bakit na natin yung ginagawa? Gusto lang naman natin kumain ng aga, ano, ng, ng breakfast, lunch, tsaka dinner. Hmm. Tama po, tama. That is true. At marami tayong natutunan. Community pantry, may bagong definition na sila kadodoy sa community pantry na ang technology pwedeng gawin ng mga the common man. No? It, pwede nila, you, can, you can devise ways to solve uh, problems that affect us all. But before we move to our discussion, I'm sure maraming pong gusto makipag-interact sa inyo. We have also friends from other countries who have joined us from India, from Cambodia, I don't, all the way from the U.S., I guess. Uh, I'm sure most of you are curious, how does the Cebu Guide Bay look like? O yung mangrove, ano bang itsura na ngayon? O sige, binigyan po tayo ng pagkakataon. Kadodoy gave us this opportunity to do a virtual tour of their place. Marami pong salamat sa pagproduce nito. Many of you are already imagining the rich marine ecosystem. Let us all have this virtual eco tour of the Zamboanga Sibugay Bay. Niyatakaroon kay mga tome dito sa atong uh, dagat sa kabasalan. So dirita manukad sa uh, barangay uh, Santa Cruz. Paingon ta sa gawa sa among area sa patrolling sa Bantay Dagat mo ni ang uh, barangay uh, Santa Cruz River. So kung makita ninyo na atay Bantay Dagat po, nga mo ni siya ang nagasilbing nga bantay to ensure nga walay makahimog mga illegal fishing activities, labaw sa tanan, 
mas mabantayan ang atong mga mangroves nga diin mo pinaka importante sa among munisipyo so mo ang ato ang uh, bantay dagat checkpoint so karon ya na ta sa bukana sa atong kabasalan river ang tawag na mo dire ay sibugibe mo na makita niyo ang sibugibe o kaning mga mga mangroves ko makita niyo dagang klase klase nga mga panagat ania din eh, tungod aning mga mangroves nga establish namo so mo ni dagang kayo mga isla so dagang klase sa mga uh, panagat nga pinangabuhian sa atong mga Uh, Fisher Fork dari sa Sibugi Bay. Mauna ang part sa Sibugi Bay. So, karena siyang area di ha, uh, sa bulan sa Abril, paingon sa June, na ay mga butan din nga mo bisita di ha, tungod ang area protektado o dagang pagkaon. Di ha, nami karoon sa, ano, sa sitro sa atong mangrove, uh, ang tawag dari Tihim Tihim uh, Island or Tihim Tihim area. So, dari sa ubo sa among mangroves, no, daghan ang uh, beneficio dari sa mga mangingisda. Kung makita ni mo, Dili lang mga langgam nga naa diha uh, sa amo mga mangrove so na ami bird, bird watching area diri tungod sa kadagan sa resources aning mangrove so daga mga langgam kini nga area may mga lusay ni diri kani adto day nawala then karon ni balik siya tungod aning may mga mangrove sa nga giprotektahan og wala nay mga illegal fishing activity din ni eh. ata karon sa atong uh, Talaba Farm sa uh, municipality of Kabasalan KGMC Talaba Farm ang among mga Talaba diri is uh, Talaba Gardening So kung makita ninyo, naasa sa ubos sa among mangroves, kay mo na ang mga mangroves nga nagahatag o mga protection o mga pagkaon aning among mga talaba. Isa ni siya sa nakatabang sa livelihood sa mga tao, mo na itong support sa ilaha para makuhaan ang grabe nga pagpanagat sa atong mga mangingisda. And in partnership with the uh, uh, local government unit of Kabasalan and different uh, partners of the uh, line agency of the government, sama sa DOST, sama sa SAE, sa BIFAR, the DNR. So muna ang bunga para nga uh, doon ay sustainable protection ang atong mga mangroves o ang atong mga kadagatan. So nag-establish may mga livelihood sa maaning talaba. No? At the same time, na ay talaba, na ay mangrove uh, protection. Uh, kini ang guardhouse na mag mo para ma doon ay bantay o ma-maintain ato ang ato ang uh, talaba farm. So ni ata karon na makita ninyo mo ni ang among mga uh, karaang mangrove nga among giprotektahan mga bakawan ng pagatpat sa area. Kini siya ang resulta sa uh, man-made o kining uh, gitanom namo nga uh, membro sa KGMC sa tabang sa uh, among partner nga diin kini ang bunga uh, o product sa among uh, pro uh, propagation seed propagation. So ni ata karon sa among uh, fish kid sa among uh, kapunungan sa gagmay mga isda sa Conception so kani mga naadri mga lapu-lapo so isa ni sa among mga mga livelihood nga panahon sa pandemic sama sa talaba mo ni usa nakatabang namo kay during sa pandemic so naami gikuaan sa among mga income para makapalit mi sa among mga uh, panginahanglanon sa among pamilya ata karoy magpiding ta mo ni atong gidapakaon mga gagmay nga isda So naapot na dire kwan mga breeder sa Lapu-Lapu mga abot mga 15 ngadto sa 30 kilos ang ang usa nga ko makinana ta breeder sa hatchery og mga research sa Lapu-Lapu so natay uh, source sa mga breeder sa Lapu-Lapu og ni ana ta karon sa among barangay Concepcion ang uh, main area sa KJMC og ang community tanaw na to makita katong mga product sa mga KJMC katong mga talaba nila nga para market mga bulad mga asoos, mga bunles, so mga limang mga talaba at tagnipis niya na tadere. Maraming uh, salamat sa ating lahat at mabuhay. Maraming salamat po. Yes, go ahead. This is... Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Kadodoy. Um, that is wonderful. And when you talk about fresh fish, when you talk about crabs and oysters, we all want to be there with you, with your community, because I'm sure it's so masarap, it's so delicious and so fresh. 
but to give us all a deeper understanding of Kat Dodoy's transformative work, we have invited with us this morning, or rather this, this afternoon, an esteemed panel of experts in community leadership, agriculture, mangroves, and marine resources. We are so happy to welcome to the panel 2020, well, 2012 Ramon Magsaysay awardee, Dr. Yang Saing Koma. Dr. Koma, good afternoon. He founded the Cambodian Center for Study and Development in Agriculture, or CEDAC, SEDAC. He advocated sustainable agriculture by building an empowered citizenry in the rice farming communities through food security, market access, and asset creation. So good afternoon, Dr. Koma. Our second panelist is a marine scientist widely cited for her research in marine ecosystem con conservation, Dr. Jean Primavera. Dr. Primavera's formal training is in zoology and marine science. She has a PhD from the University of the Philippines. And it's also followed by an active research and development career in aquaculture and also mangroves. She is a multi-awarded marine scientist. So for over six decades, Dr. Primavera has published and lectured extensively on research, on researchers, students, fisher folks, church groups, and civil society on aquaculture and, marine, and, and mangrove issues. Dr. Primavera, good afternoon. Welcome to the panel. And last but not least is Ms. Flora Monica Bellinario. Flora is currently the Senior Manager for Network Financial and Market Inclusions of Rare Philippines and co-founder of Tindagat.ph, a social enterprise that connects fishers directly to consumers to support our fishing communities. In her previous work, she handled projects on development of fishery plans, fishery development, safety and quality assurance, post-harvest fisheries, and biodiversity conservation. Wow! Flora obtained her Master's of Science in Innovation and Business from the Asian Institute of Management, and she also has a Bachelor's of Science in Fisheries from the University of the Philippines in the Visayas. Good afternoon, Flora, and welcome to our panel as well. So let's start. Dr. Koma, your reaction, please, to what you've heard and seen so far. Yeah, thank you and uh, good afternoon, everyone uh, from Cambodia. So first of all, I, I would like to thank you for inviting, inviting me to join this uh, panel. So as uh, one of the awardees uh, of the Ramon Masai Sai Award from 2012, now I'm, I, I was listening or I listened to uh, Kadodoy's story about his work and now he also being a award uh, for the 2021. Yeah. First, I would like to congratulate uh, Kadodoy for, 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 for this award and I'm, I'm sure this must be an encouragement and a further support for him for his good work for his community and for the com community in the Philippines, and as you said, also throughout Asia. Uh, uh, secondly, I, I think uh, uh, he is the one, I think uh, we share the same uh, uh, ideas yeah, about community empowerment, and how, how to help uh, simple grassroots people to, to work together to take collective action. Uh, for collective benefits, and uh, but we in order to do to do this, and you can see from the story of Cardodoy, you, you need to have a vision and passion, and uh, but it's not enough. You have to have a capacity, integrity, and and, and cooperation in order to to implement uh, your ideas, your vision, and uh, for us. To me, from my experience in working with a, a simple farmer, poor farmer, small farmer, rice farmer uh, throughout Cambodia uh, more than 20 years, 
so he we have such a good example because like Cardo Doi, so he have vision, passion, and he set good example by his action. And his action is now speaking louder, louder. Uh, uh, prove a good example for every community. Uh, from my experience in Cambodia, also, if you start to, to build a good example, the, so you, you, there are a lot of people interested to learn and, and, and to follow and to replicate of, of your experience. You see a lot of uh, organized rice farmer now in Cambodia. A lot of com company working with organized rice farmer export organized rice uh, to Europe and other country. So when I first I start to build a small community, I start to open a store, I start to export rice, and uh, there was a lot of uh, criticism that it's not possible. You cannot sell, sell organized product like in, in Cambodia and so on. Is something like that, but you know, you have a vision, you, you have a clear picture in your mind that you want to, to build a, a country or a world that land, food, and water without poison. Uh, you want uh, a rice farmer to be rich from, from organic rice farming, something like that. And you also, you want a, a consumer enjoy a good food and farmer uh, enjoy a happy life. But it's just it's a long, long way to go, and but you have to, to start. From, from one farmer, from a small group of farmers, to millions of farmers, something like that. It's a long, long way to go. So in this, I would like to uh, also to share my experience that uh, in order to do this, first we have to, to start to build the community leadership. Start from, from small and build it better and bigger. But the second challenge is how to sustain. So the sustainability of your leadership, your support. I, uh, so we, if you, you hand over the your leadership to next generation, like Kado Doyle was speaking about education children and so on, you know, you, you to continue to build your community. And number three, to replicate, uh, the question of re replicability of uh, your success. And in this, uh, in, in this context, uh, uh, to me as a, the person who, 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 uh, who have been very active in community building, community leadership, we still, and we still, uh, face this kind of a uh, uh, challenge, uh, especially to ensure uh, the sustainability of uh, uh, your your success, the sustainability of your experience, and and to replicate it to other community, to other place, and to other country as well. And uh, uh, so it's, it's it's a long term process. It's not never ending. Uh, you continue to build, uh, build your own capacity. I was talking about capacity, I was talking about integrity and cooperation. So the capacity you have to do with your, your motivation, your time, your skill, your knowledge, uh, your resources, uh, your commitment to do something better, and your integrity that you have to have your plan, you have to have your promise, you have to have your action that's not just talking but you have to, to do uh, what you plan you have to 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 walk your talk and you have to do continuously evaluation uh, of what you have done in order to improve yourself and number three is about cooperation you cannot do think something alone you have to have your your team you have member partner and stakeholder uh, to support you and this is a process that you have to build all of these uh, three uh, three elements or, or three digital three foundation and to continue our journey. And now uh, I also, uh, uh, because now I, I, I started a grassroots democratic party, so I, I now I become a political leader, but I, I, I have not changed my vision. I, not, I have not changed my, my strategy and idea. So, but I focus more to work with community leader to encourage them to become local politicians, to, to empower citizens, to be democratic citizens, you know, to challenge the, the, the local and national government to be more accountable to the local people and to solve uh, their own problem. I think uh, uh, just to summarize again, so I would like to con congratulate Kadodoy, Kadodoy for this uh, uh, important uh, work, for this success, and also it inspired me also to do a more good work for our community in Cambodia, and I also very proud of the Ramon Maksaisai Award that continue your good work to support uh, uh, good community leader so that they can replicate uh, their work in, in the Philippines or throughout Asia. Yeah, thank you for, for, for your attention. This is my reaction, my first reaction. Yeah. Thank you, Ramon. Uh, 
Thank you, Dr. Koma. All right, Ms. Susan? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yes. No, thank you so much. We've heard you very clearly. Very nice message to your fellow uh, Magsaysay ORD. It's like a, a brother, uh, an older brother uh, yeah. giving advice to a younger brother. Uh, well, not in age, but maybe because you came ahead of him as a Magsaysay ORD and that uh, it is really the passion and, uh, and I like what you said about integrity and the credibility of becoming a leader is what will sustain uh, the work that is being done with people. And that has been your journey. Thank you so much for, say, for uh, sharing your journey. And uh, Kadodoy, na, did you notice Kadodoy? And we all noticed, Miss Susan, but did we notice? Your scarf. I think we're going to see you, you have the <laughs> same pattern of your <laughs> scarf and i think we all want one so we're all going to try and uh, and you follow the two of you it. you have a fashion statement see the magsaysay winners are now making a fashion statement <laughs> and it is a it is a symbol of of community community uh engagement no and and kindred spirits uh coming together uh kado doy if you want to talk to dr koma on the side, we will connect you with him because Dr. Koma, as you, you said earlier, you are already uh, helping local, local farmers to become part of the political sphere in Cambodia so that they have more voice. Kadodoy, be very careful. Uh, <laughs> but we will connect you with Dr. Koma because he has learned so much about how community leaders can become part of that space, uh, the political space. Right. And then maybe Dr. Koma can also visit um, Ka Kadodoy and taste some of those fresh fish, crabs, and oysters. Yes, that's right. We will plan yeah. that. Visit very good, soon. Very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Thank you, okay. uh, Dr. Yang. Um, maybe you, you can... Uh, someday you, you can visit my area in, in the Philippines, especially in Sambuanga, Sibugay. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, okay. for your... Uh, <clears throat> so we can change, I bring some good rice to you and you uh, give me some good crap. <laughs> Gosh, can you imagine? Can you imagine all that wonderful rice and seafood together yeah, with yeah. vinegar? Oh my gosh. Okay, enough. Okay. If not, we're all gonna get hungry. Okay, yeah. Chiclet, I think the next person that will react uh, and give us her reflections is Dr. Primavera. So go ahead, Dr. Georgine. Good afternoon. May I speak in Cebuano, the native tongue that I share with ORD Roberto Balion? so I can better reach out to Kababayans in Sambuanga, Sibugay, and Southern Philippines. And maybe you can do both, Georgine. You can go yes. back and forth. Akong kinasing-kasing nga pahalipay kang katuloy sa iyang nadawat nga Ramon Magsaysay Award. My heart felt greetings to Katuloy. Salamat kayo. Kung sa kinang katulang pasidungog, Saan ay sa mga naglihok sa pagpaangat sa kahintang sa ato mga gagmay na mangingisda sa Mindanao. This is a great honor for those who try to uplift uh, the downtrodden, the small fishermen in fishers in Mindanao. Isip ko sa kapinakadakong isla sa Pilipinas, apan kanunay ulahi sa mga ayudang pangkalambuan. One of the bigger islands, but always last in uh, Ayuda. Mm. In 2017, my NGO, the Zoological Society of London, invited Dodoy Balion to teach our own fisher folk POs in Panay how to propagate the Pagatpat mangrove, which you can see uh, to the side of my screen. Together with forester Eric Buduan, Dudoy and KGMC members have developed protocols to produce seedlings of pagatpat, notoriously rare and difficult to grow. Known to scientists as Sonaratya Alba, 
This is the first among equals or the 40 to 50 mangrove species in the Philippines. In terms of protecting coastlines, as shown by Typhoon Yolanda or Haiyan, which left some 15,000 deaths and billions of pesos in damage. But only a month after the storm, leafless pagatpat branches started to show green sprouts. This was in stark contrast to the thousands of dead bakhau trees identified by their familiar crop roots. These bakhau mangroves are favored by government and non-government organizations alike based on convenience in planting, but not on science. Many mangrove programs have planted not only the wrong species, bakao, but also on the wrong sites, that is, on thousands of hectares of seagrass beds, thereby dislocating seahorses, sea turtles, rabbit fish, and other seagrass animals. But why? Because of so much money available for planting, millions of pesos and dollars from national and external development agencies like World Bank but very little space. So sea grasses are transformed to mangroves that is like robbing Peter to pay Paul, an ecological crime prob probably chargeable under the writ of Kalikasa. The obvious question, where to plant mangroves has an equally obvious answer, where they used to be. And that means fish ponds, abandoned fish ponds. Before 1960, Manila Bay had 75,000 hectares of mangroves, and even earlier, up to 90,000 hectares all the way to the Candaba Swamp in Pampanga. Mangroves were then so widespread that the place was called Mainilad by Tagalogs, referring to Nilad, the mangrove Sififora hydrophilacea. Now the bay has only 1,000 hectares of mangroves, but 50,000 hectares of fish ponds. For environmental sustainability, Science gives the ratio of four to one. That is four hectares of mangroves for every hectare of fish pond. Applied today, this would mean regenerating 40,000 hectares of fish ponds in the bay back to mangroves and retaining only 10,000 hectares for ponds. Media coverage makes a big thing of the ongoing mangrove reforestation in connection with the new international airport but what is planting 100 hectares, even 1,000 hectares, compared to the need for 40,000 hectares? Also, various regulations mandate that abandoned ponds should be reverted back to mangroves after five years. These laws have existed since the 1970s but lack implementation. Another metric available from the scientific literature is the 100-meter green belt. A band of coastal vegetation, 100 meters wide, composed of mangroves and their associates, that will reduce energy from waves by up to 60%. In the wake of Yolanda, in 2014 and 2015, Senator Bam Aquino and Congressman Rodel Batokabe sponsored the National Coastal Greenbelt Bill. Since then, Senator Aquino lost his re-election bid. Congressman Batokabe was assassinated. The Greenbelt Bill has not been passed, while hundreds to thousands of Filipinos die from the 20 typhoons that hit the archipelago yearly. So finally, although Ka Dudoy's group has restored funds to mangroves, propagated pagatpat, and rehabilitated green belts, the rest of us have not. We need to close the gap from scientific findings on paper to mangrove conservation on the ground. We therefore challenge both national and local government institutions to provide proper governance by harmonizing existing legislation, such as laws on abandoned funds, promulgating new laws such as the Green Belt Bill, long overdue, and most of all, exercising political will to enforce them. Only then can we maximize synergies among academe, civil society, and government, and provide hope to the millions of coastal dwellers 
along our 36,300 kilometers of coastline in more than 7,000 islands so that the effort of Pa Dudul and those before him will not be in vain. Thank you. Congratulations, Putro Pa Dudul. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Primavera. Um, you know, as you so aptly said, I mean, everything that you said is so relevant in, you know, in what's happening in the world right now, especially as we face climate change for the next generation. So I just want you to know that we are all with you in terms of, you know, in amplifying the message of making certain that we help protect and conserve our environment. And let's start with mangrove planting. So thank you. Thank you so much. All right, the last person uh, who's going to um, react and give us her thoughts and feelings about this afternoon session is another subject matter expert, Flora Bellinario. So Flora, please take away the square. Yes, mayong hapon. Good afternoon from Iloilo. So I feel deeply honored for being part of this panel with your, with your lecture, Kadodoy. Lili, saludo po. Saludo po kami sa inyo. I remember vividly when we first met in KGMC office years ago. He has lots of stories to tell. And you can see and feel in him how passionate he is about what he is doing. He is not there not just to impress the team, but more than that, he wants to tell the world really that, he's, that this is us. This is what we felt and this is what we experienced. And this is what we wanted to be. So, Kadodo is saludo for that. And while there are several means and strategies explored towards optimal and sustainable utilization and management of fishery resources, Kadodoy's experience showed us that strong leadership remains significant to such advocacy. I greatly applaud Kadodoy for his strong leadership in promoting fishery regulation uh, compliance among fishing communities and also bridging positive changes in the governance and even resolving conflicts. So likewise, leaders really play a vital role in timely dissemination of right information to catalyze cooperation towards a common goal of sustainable fisheries. We need more of Kadodoy. So we need more of him to advance our works in fisheries management. So community leaders like Kadodoy should be supported and this kind of social network should be developed within fishing communities in order to build sustainable fisheries. Since, hence, I could say that really enabling competent and effective leaders and strengthening partnerships of coastal communities are two important ingredients for effective um, fisheries management, which we need to focus on. So we have also witnessed with RARE, so how women in KGMC as an organization played an essential role in its operations. So among the early support, supporters of Kadodoy back then when everything else started to disintegrate were women. So you can see that women's roles and participation in their activities as well as youth and children are gaining new heights. And so that KGMC ensures that there is equitable decision making within their organization, which eventually is observed to influence household level decision making. So because of what they're doing, also children in their community, as you can see in Kadodoy's presentation earlier, are slowly appreciating the value of the sector. And so I could say that the impact of Kadodoy and his active and well-organized cooperative has positively contributed to the lives of their fisher constituents well beyond the effects of marine conservation and the people around them. So in fact, today, despite the quarantine, the members of the KGMC are able to sell their fish catch online and even deal directly with the inst institutional buyers. So moreover, KGMC member fishers are also able to access capacity building programs and other opportunities from relevant government agencies. So these also illustrate how cooperatives can be leveraged to make a difference in the inequitable position of our municipal small-scale fishers in the fisheries value chain. So I still remember when my capstone group mates and I in grad school had an interview with Kadodoy. It really struck me when he said, this is really his exact words, Mali yung sinasabi ng mga magulang sa anak nila na mag-aral para di matulad sa kanila na mangingisda lamang. Dapat mag-aral sila para maging professional sila na mangingisda. So, well, 
So that was really inspiring. So he suggested that when you have the right information, you are empowered to do the right things and eventually change the landscape of the sector and of the business, of course, for good. So eventually, these words became our motivation and our anchor as we pursue our capstone project, now turned into a social enterprise. So together with my classmates, we built our own startup called Tindagat.ph, where we aim to connect fishers directly to and consumers and streamline the chain. So inspired by my work in marine conservation with Rare, and most of all by Ka Dodoy, without him, I won't be able to convince my co-founders to join me in this mission. But we just don't want to be fence sitters, but just like Ka Dodoy, he is our inspiration. So we aim to change the landscape and influence the fisheries sector. And I hope it will be the same also for everyone who are with us today. So we can only do so much. We need to build a movement. We need people to support our advocacies for our one ocean that connects us and also for KGMC to continue um, Afif and um, continue its mission for their three its vision. Thank you and maayong adlaw. Thank you, Flora. What a wonderful message. And, and that you remember, you remember those words from Kado Doy. Kado Doy, naalala nyo bang yun yung advice ninyo kay Flora? At, no? Mag-aral para mas maging yes, na I, Sabi ko, <clears throat> wag, wag na, sabi ko sa mga membro ko, tayong mga magulang, wag natin ikahiya na tayo yung mangingista. At yung mga anak natin, wag palaging sabihin na mag-aral kayong mabuti para wag kayong matulog sa amin ng mga mangingista lamang. Mali yun. Ang dapat mag-aral kayong mabuti para pagdating ng araw, kayo ay magiging proud na profesional na mga mangingista. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Yun, yun talaga ang, ano ko, nung napuntahan dito kami ng RER uh, at kasama si Ma'am Flora, kasi itong mga profesional na fisheries ito, itong dapat tularan ninyo o tingnan nyo. Maganda ang mga ginagawa. Yun, yun ang ibig sabihin. Yes, tama. At ngayon, Flora, mer you, you consider yourself of a wo woman fisher folk. From AIM. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, yes, I am. <laughs> great, great. This is wonderful message. At kawai-kawai ang mga kababaihan ng KGMC. Mabuhay kayo, yung mga nandyan sa likod, di Kado Doy. Uh, maraming salamat for inspiring all of us. So, at this juncture, uh, thank you to all our panelists. We will now move to the dialogue and op open forum. I would like to call again all our panelists, uh, Professor Randy David, uh, uh, Dr. Primavera, Dr. Coma, and, and Flora, please, to uh, open your camera and join us in this panel. I would also like to acknowledge the other people in this grid, Kadodoy's friends and supporters from SESFI, from Savior Agricultural Expansion Service Foundation, uh, Sylvia Aceves, Administrative Officer of SESFI and Mr. Nestor Carbonera, Executive Director. Are you here? Please open your camera and uh, we will have a good discussion as well. No? Okay. Dr. Coma, are you opening your camera? Miladel Capitania, Municipal Agriculturist, Agriculturist Officer, LGU Cabasalan. Hi, Miladel. Mr. Felix Badon, uh, Municipal Environment Natural Resources Officer. These are friends of Kadodoy. Uh, and we, are, we just want to acknowledge them that they all helped to put up this lecture with us, our partners down south, to make this happen. Okay, thank you so much again. Before we proceed with the open forum, do any of our panelists would want to ask any questions to Kadodoy or to any uh, co-panelists? Or anything you want to express at this point? Um, I just I just want to say, Chiclet, that on behalf of Ramon Magsaysay, um, Ka, Ka Dodoy, kasama mo po kami sa talagang dyan sa mission nyo to convince more young men and women to become professional fishermen and fisherwomen. Ang, you know, we are in the Philippines, we're an archipelago, and dami nating yamang dagat. But naman tayo hindi pwedeng, you know, why, why can't we make our, you know, our, our, environment even richer and better para mas madami tayong huli, mas masarap, malinis at talagang maging number one capital tayo sa buong mundo. 
in terms of training um, fishermen and women in coming up with model fisheries and at the same time getting the best catch in the world so we can bring more tourists uh, and, and eat more healthy food. So talagang kasama mo po kami in whatever you do in promoting that. Maraming salamat sa uh, sinabi niyo po, ma'am. Uh, so sana and sa lahat ng mga taga Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation. At uh, yun niya, uh, dati akala ko uh, kami lang yung uh, pamilya sa Sambuanga Sibugay, the local government, the provincial government, and different line national agencies and uh, non-government organizations and like uh, SAES, uh, the Fori Foundation, the local government and the FNC and the rest of my colleague uh, Fisher Pook in, in Sambuanga, Sibugay. But now, because of Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation, uh, talagang uh, napaka ano namin yan, uh, nadagdagan yung gasolina o lakas namin na gawin yung gusto namin mangyari na sa, sa aming mga mangiisda na kasama ho natin ang lahat na uh, sa tingin natin ay nangangailangan ng ating uh, uh, tulong o ng ating uh, pag uh, ano sa kanila pag uh, uh, pag alalay uh, Randy lalo, lalo na sa mga maliit na mangiisda yeah mm -hmm. gusto ko lang sana ng uh, susugan yung uh, binanggit ni Flora what just want to to uh, follow up on what Flora was suggesting earlier about creating a movement, San Kilusan, you know, to uh, to promote the the regeneration of our of our coastal communities and our coastal forests. You no, know. may I suggest that uh, the Ramon Magsaysay Foundation might help. Uh, Kadodoy maybe put up a YouTube channel no, of his own uh, where he can interact with people like Dr. Jujen Primavera, uh, uh, si Flora, and, and other people who have been engaged in this, in, in, in this uh, rehabilitation and replanting effort, no? which many people tend to underestimate as as uh, unimportant and uh, simple, as simple as uh, just planting bakawan, no? new bakawan. Ayun pala, <laughs> there are different kinds. As uh, Georgian pointed out, uh, you cannot plant bakawan where the seagrass is because that would be like, uh, like uh, uh, regenerating something at the expense of destroying something else. No? This is not common sense knowledge. No? And I hope that that Kadodoy can and and uh, the, the people who have been working with him can put up a, a platform, maybe a digital platform that can be seen not just in the Philippines but all over the world, no, by by fishermen, uh, where the lessons that have been learned over more than three decades, no, of actual practice, can be shared, no, more extensively. Do you think that's possible? Because I, I think of Kadodoy now as a some uh, tunay na teacher ng bayan, eh. <laughs> a teacher of the people, no? Mm -hmm. uh, at at sayang kung manatili lamang sa kabasalan o sa konsepsyon itong mahalagang kaalamang ibinahagi niya sa atin ngayong hapon. Yun lang. Pwede ka na yun, Kadodoy? <laughs> Oh, uh, Laura? Yes, uh, Sir uh, Rande. Uh, yun talaga ang isang layone ng KGMC na sana lahat ng mga mamamayan sa buong mundo, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, hindi lang sa KGMC, hindi lang sa Kabasal, hindi lang sa Buwang Sibugay, na may, may ganoong ano, uh, pananaw na uh, dapat alam natin ang lahat ng ating kapaligiran, anong, anong mayroon na pwede natin pagyamanin ayon sa ating kakayahan at ayon sa ating uh, pagsama uh, pagsasama uh, sa ating partnership. Yan po, maganda po yan. Mm -hmm. uh, ang paggamit ngayon ng social media. Yeah. Social media is the very powerful platform to amplify your messages and Dr. Koma, I think you you have ventured into social media already to mm. Yeah, he is so active right. in Twitter. 
showing all the produce of the farmers in Cambodia. Tell us your experience mm -hmm. there, Dr. Koma. <clears throat> Yeah, I, 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 I think the idea of uh, using social media, Twitter or YouTube or Facebook is also is very important. Uh, so to amplify, amplify the message, to share the knowledge and, 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 and experience and can uh, connect you to more and more people and, uh, and uh, to other community. Uh, we we have produced. Uh, I myself have produced. I don't know how many videos. I cannot count. <laughs> I, but I put uh, in the Facebook because uh, Facebook is uh, in Cambodia. We have uh, more people to follow <laughs> Facebook uh, less than. Uh, so, uh, like uh, one video can reach maybe one million uh, view. That one million farmer view the video. Or hundred thousand people view the video. But we don't know how many people. Uh, follow or practice or whatever but you can see that you you can reach a million of people uh, and in 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 in, in this case I, I i support the idea of uh, maybe kadodoy he can also do something or someone can help him to produce a, a good story about his work about his community and it's not only about to disseminate to replicate his experience to the community but also as we discussed earlier so to link to other activity can contribute to the livelihood of the uh, the, the the fishery community to the mangrove community like ecotourism and whatever and i think it's a, I, I support this idea but you need to have a real knowledge and uh, you need to have people to help to, to use this kind of uh, social media and as you know uh, the gap between the people is getting bigger and bigger because of the technology because of the information and social media and so on and if you have you can use it in in the, the in the right way it can help a lot but you have to be also careful you know nowadays with the social media but uh, from our side we think it's a good uh, good tools a good uh, platform uh, for us to 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 bring up a message to reach a million of people yeah thank you dr koma any thoughts on that? Uh, how do we amplify this message and reach uh, the ones who are the 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 need the ones who need to get more information about what's happening in our uh, rural communities, in coastal communities, in the, in and and begin to become part of a, some kind of a movement. Any That's thoughts, it, Dr. Georgine? Yes. Yes. Um, I may uh, actually uh, my NGO ZSL um, has been having uh, training courses in mangroves. No, that's why we invited Kadudoy because only he, his group, had propagated pagatpat. Ay ang hirap talaga ng pagatpat na yan, but we found na ginagawa nila. So he, he was one of our lecturers. So we have this ongoing lecture. Siguro thousands na ang na train namin. And then the pandemic hit. As ito, talagang hands-on training course. Now intensive. They have lectures and then they they grow the mangroves, they nurse the mangroves, and so on. But when the pandemic hit, we had to switch our ano, into webinars. So hindi na hands-on uh, training course, webinars na. And each webinar, uh, we get 500 to 1,000 uh, participants uh, sa Zoom. No? But maybe not enough, not the millions, as I believe, Dr. Koma, but it's, it's a good start. And I'm happy with Kadudoy. Thank you, Talaga, sa RM Foundation for going to the byways of the rural areas and not the highways of the cities, no? In seeking out farmers and fishers. Kasi this is how this will, the mangroves, no? Hindi pinapansin, but with you, with your award, Kadudoy, Okay na. Plus, uh, meron ding Best Mangrove Awards sa Para El Mar uh, where uh, we had we had the second Best Mangrove Awards na, no? Yung mga Sarga won. Kamu ka duloy, wala man mo mo akip. Kung naglakip mo, champion yun unta mo, no? But anyway, so the profile of mangroves is going up and I think this having this community, you know, uh, is, is a good idea. But we need to train the younger generation kay mm -hmm. Dui. Nanguban na ba yata, ha? Hindi <laughs> na ta magdugay. We won't last forever and ever. We need the younger generation to, you know, to take our place. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you, yeah, Dr. Georgine. Uh, yes, I'm hearing a voice. Okay. The message of Dr. Georgine Primavera is right. We have to educate and uh, prepare our next generation, like our ch children, uh, to always uh, participate on our mangrove uh, activities and uh, programs, uh, and and uh, the community uh, in the in the grassroots area. Ito lang kasi ang uh, pinakamabisang paraan na tama ang sinabi ni uh, doktora na hindi naman tayo forever uh, wala naman forever sa mundo <laughs> wala naman forever na tao na isang daang taon tayo o isang libong taon tayo so kaya isa, isa yan sa magaganda o uh, tinutukan talaga namin yung next generation na uh, preparation yon ang in-emphasis ko talaga when I was uh, doing in any uh, session or picture in different area in the Philippines na yung next generation talaga natin dapat alam anong ginagawa natin ng mga patatata at magandang tuwaan yung mga bata kasi kaysa ating mga patanda minsan uh, hindi naman lahat pero ang dami ng minsan lalo na sa aming mga minsta ah, ano, alam ko na yan huwag mo na akong turuan dyan <laughs> no, so, yung mga bata kasi madali at mas uh, effective sa according to our uh, experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, talking about engaging the youth, no? it's always a challenge, even for Dr. Koma, uh, getting them to become farmers. Uh, for Kadodoy, uh, getting them to stay in the communities and uh, see that to become a fisherman is actually a job. It's a full-time job. no? and that it, it can be a career. Even farmers in, in Cambodia, Dr. Koma has been uh, harping on the youth should begin to set their, their site, set their site in rural career to become farmers. And I think that is the challenge to all of us in this generation to be, engage the, the next generation. And I'd like to bring in uh, one of the members of the RMTLI's Next Gen Leadership Program, the for, for first cohort, uh, Dane Soriano is here. Dane is a youth leader, an environmental advocate, and currently the Hi, Secretary Dane. General. Hi, Dane, Secretary General of the mm -hmm. United Nations Youth Hello. Advisory Board for Biodiversity and Environment Sector, and campaigner for Save the Philippine Seas. Okay, let's hear some uh, inputs from Dane and a question to the panelists. Go ahead, Dane. Hello po. Um, good afternoon po sa inyo dyan sa Philippines. Magandang araw po sa inyo lahat. Yeah, um, they, where are you now? So sorry, I did direct uh, yeah, uh, I'm calling in from the United Kingdom po ngayon kasi dito po ako ngayon nag-aaral for my master's. Uh, my master's is actually on environmental management. So um, I think this webinar is a huge inspiration for me like right now na ginagawa ko, nag-aaral ako na mabuti for uh, my dream to become um, a, a citizen of the Philippines na maalam talaga pagdating sa environmental protection. And I just want to say that when I was invited, na then do you want to be a youth reactor for for this event? We will have Kat Dodoy as our speaker and um, the amazing panelists that we have right now. And I said, I can literally wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning here in the UK. Hindi po ako ma talagang gigising ako kahit madaling araw para mapanood at para lang maging parte nito. It's a huge honor to be even part of this and to be to be you know sharing this space with our fellow award with the with the awardees and with the fans. Um, I just want to say when I watched the video po of Kadudoy, I watched it actually yesterday. Umiiyak po ako sa loob ng library because it reminded mm -hmm. me of how um, fishermen or fishing is a noble profession for me. Kasi parang tama nga po yung sinasabi ng karamihan na parang for the youth, it might not be an enticing job. Parang 
di ba sa karamihan sa kabataan niya yun, gusto maging abogado, gusto maging doktor, gusto maging ingeniero. But in reality, as an archipelago, as the Philippines, and we're so proud of, of calling ourselves the center of the center of marine biodiversity, I think it's super, um, um, it's reinforcing the idea na ang um, isa sa mga Ramon Magsaysay Awardees for 2021 ay isa maging isda. And it shows how affirming the work of Kadodoy is in terms of environmental protection, in terms of of marine conservation. Um, and I felt inspired with the idea that um, sa work na ginagawa ng ng KGMC sa so work na ginagawa nila kadodoy it it highlights how people are connected to the environment na hindi lang tayo isang superior na species or hindi tayo superior individuals but rather we're part of the environment and also highlighting the fact na we need to invest also in our environment kasi doon natin kinukuha yung basic needs natin bilang tao na Doon tayo kumukuha ng pagkain, ng tubig na iniinom natin. And di ba dapat nga walang nagugutom na Pilipino kasi when you go out, when you go in our in our coastal areas, meron ka dapat mabibingwit na isda, meron ka dapat makukuha ng mga crabs, may makukuha ka dapat shellfish. And ang yaman-yaman ng ecosystem natin. So when I'm here, nung nandito po ako, so when they're asking me, Oy, from what country do you live in? So I live in the Philippines and we have the best marine ecosystems in the world. Ganun po ako ka-proud sa, sa ecosystems natin in, in the Philippines. Um, now, just to cut everything short, um, my question to Kadodoy would be... Um, Umiiyak kasi ako nung pinapakinggan ko po yung lecture niya. Pero <laughs> ano po yung hope or what is your dream for the younger generation? Ano mm-hmm. po yung nakikita nyo in maybe 5 or 10 years na pwedeng gawin naming mga kabataan para tulungan ka sa laban mo bilang isang environmentalist, bilang isang mangingisda? Ano sa tingin nyo po yung pwede naming gawin so that we continue your work as an environmentalist and also as a fisher folk and also ano pa po yung pwede naming ibigay as the youth to really protect our ecological heritage, our ecosystems, and our habitat. Yun lang po. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ding. Sige po, Kadodoy. Uh, Yes, uh, Sir Dave, uh, magandang kumaga dyan sa, sa, sa lugar mo. Maganda yung, ano, yung katalungan. Eh, yun ang gusto. Uh, di lang kami sa KGMC o mangingisda. Yun ang gusto namin mga katanungan ng mga kabataan o yung mga anak namin. Tatay, nanay, angkol, di lang mangingisda. Ano ba ang pwedeng namin maitulong? namin sa inyo bilang inyong mga anak o mga sumusunod or bilang apo, bilang pamangkin, ano ba ang pwede naman maitulong para panatilihing uh, maganda at uh, mas, mas maganda yung mga programa ang ginagawa ninyo ngayon o ginagawa natin. So ang, ang ano namin palagi sa kanila responder na sabi, ito ang gagawin ninyo. Una, mag-aral kayong mabuti para alam nyo Yung nangyayari sa buong mundo, nung nangyayari sa kapaligiran, hindi kayo maging mangmang sa lahat ng ginagawa ninyo. Una yan, pag-aralan nyo lahat ang inyong kapaligiran yung nangyayari sa, sa ating mga batas. Dapat maging maalam kayo dyan. Yung nangyayari ngayon sa ating uh, klima, dapat maalam kayo dyan. At ang pangalawa, isulong ninyo yung ating programa dahil ngayon ay napakaganda naman ng mga uh, plataforma o yung mga uh, modern gadgets na ginagawa, instead na magtitiktok-tiktok kayo dyan na magpasayo-sayo, sana isama nyo yung ating programa bilang mangingista at pagpangangalaga sa ating kalikasan. Isama nyo sa tiktok nyo o sa sayaw nyo. Isang magandang um, ano yan na magagawa ninyo, maitulong ninyo. At labing, at ang pinakamatindi pangatlo, dapat nangunguna ho kayo sa mga gawain na sa tingin ninyo na mag, sa balang araw 
yung gusto namin mangyari sa inyo, magkaroon kayo ng safe and clean and sustainable environment sa mundong ito. Yun po, yung ibig sabihin ng, ng, ng safe environment, yung safety kayo sa mga kalamidad, safety kayo sa mga man-made o sa mga uh, kung anong mga hindi kaya-ayang kagawa, kagawa ng tao. Kasi pag maganda yung relation, so walang gulo. So safe kayo doon. Pangalawa, safe environment or healthy environment. Yung malinis na tubig, may, may, may malinis na hangin kayo, may masarap na, papa, na mga pagkain, yung resourceful, yung mga magagandang tanawin. Yun. Yun ang dapat na uh, nangunguna at uh, may mga ganong ginagawa yung mga uh, kabataan. Yun ang sinasabi namin sa kanila. At yun din ang tanong mo, uh, Sir uh, Uh, din. So maraming salamat sa iyo at uh, isa din kayong inspiration para sa amin. Salamat po. Sige, hingiin lang natin. Uh, Mila Del will uh, translate for us uh, in English yung nasabi ni Kado Doy for our uh, participants and friends who are non-Filipinos. Go ahead, Mila Del. Uh, what can the youth contribute to the environmental conservation and protection? In our own setting here in Tabastanan, Zamboanga, Sibugay, the KJMC is involving their children in their activities starting from the nursery establishments for their uh, reforestation projects. In, he said, Tadudoy said, that for the young generation to participate in the preservation and conservation of our environment, that you have to be educated. You have to study diligently so that the children would know what is happening to our environment. They can understand what are the factors affecting the, the impact of climate change in the factors that contributed to the destruction of our environment. And as youth who are, who are so techy, you know, using technology, instead of making nonsense TikTok, uh, use the technology, um, make the environmental conservation and protection a subject of the TikTok, for for the for the community to be to be involved and to be aware what we are doing here although we are so marginalized you see uh kapasalan zambanga sibuga is so far and yet we are able to 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 engage to the wider community because of because of the gadgets and technology so Hopefully, the the young generation now who are more who are more uh, advanced in technology use, uh, you can utilize it and maybe um, help us help us here in our local community to make better system uh, process our process our experiences local experiences in you can you can make it. Uh, more educational for the community. And he said that as parents, you know, as parents, they only we only want a safe, safe and sustainable environment for our future generation. So we can only do so much. We need the expertise of this young generation. To pursue and sustain our efforts. That's right. Thank you, Miladel. Thank you, Kadodoy. Technology is with the youth, not Dane. So Kadodoy knows TikTok. So I guess somebody will do a TikTok of the Kabasalan of KGMC and Kadodoy is in TikTok. All right. Thank you so much, Dane. We will not let you go before you you sleep. Let's do a uh, let's capture this and uh, have a, a, a photo of all the panelists. Please, we request all our panelists to open the join. Yeah. 
joining us this uh, afternoon are the family of Kato Doy, Dane, and the members of KGMC. And all our panelists. Please open your camera and we will just take a very quick photo before we move to the open forum. We have a lot of questions coming in from the Q&A chat box. So, uh, are we ready? Can we? We are taking a screenshot. Three, two, one. And another one. Three, two, one. Returning the Zoom platform to Ms. Uh, Carmencita Toledo. Thank you. Look at the KGMC. Ano yon, Kado Doy? Is that the, the hand signal? KGMC hand signal. Uh, uh, this is uh, for uh, uh, grateful uh, peace, environment, and uh, unity. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. Meron tayong bago, hindi na ganyan ngayon. Ito ay pang Ganito na. Korea. Ganito na. Pag KGMC, pag mangroves, pag environment, climate change, ito yon. Okay. At this point, we are now opening the floor for your questions from our audience uh, via Zoom in this chat box. Um, we have a number of questions coming in. Uh, for Kado Doy, let me read this uh, very specific question from... Uh, Jurjet Honkulada. For Kado Doy, do you think it is necessary necessary to address politics in your work? Oh. And then there is it in Bisaya. Mom Jurjet, do you want to ask your question live? We can promote you. Just raise your hand and we will promote you. Okay, if Ma'am Jujet is, uh, so yun kadodoy, politics, meron pang isang uh, a question din dyan. Okay, yun nga. And then Dr. Koma, what compelled you to turn to politics? Kadodoy, meron bang uh, nakikita kayong political agenda in the horizon? Doi. Uh, another ano another hindi ko masyadong ma ano maintindihan yung tanong kasi medyo malalim at ang tanong lang po ni Miss Georgette ay paano niyo nahahandle o mahahandle paano niyo haharapin ang mga political agenda na, na nakapaloob ang inyong trabaho kung saan nakapaloob ang inyong trabaho Yan po, uh, salamat sa tanong. Isa, kaya nga isa din sa kung bakit naging malakas kami na, na PGMC. Kasi kami po ay wala naman kaming ano, kinikilinga na o oh, isang uh, ano talaga uh, sino yung uh, politiko. Ang tinitingnan lang talaga namin kung sino yung mga politician na napak, makapagdala, makapagpaganda o makapag-provide or makapag-promote or makapag uh, bigay ng tamang support or uh, sabi doon yung yung may agenda patungkol sa aming mga mangingisda ay yun talaga ang sinusuportaran talaga namin ng mga uh, ano ng mga taga gobyerno uh, hindi dahil mabait lang hindi dahil may may nabigay kung hindi talagang yung may pagtingin talaga sa aming mga mangingisda na mabigyan kami ng 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 ano ng kalutasan yung aming mga hinaing bilang mga mangingisda yan po ang aming uh, uh, ano diyan uh, kumbaga prinsipyo ng mga tagtakitunsi kaya kami minsan na uh, inaaway din ng mga ibang uh, mga politician no uh, dahil uh, uh, may ano daw hindi daw kami nag uh, uh, ako mismo hindi hindi daw ako masyadong bukal doon sa mga ano nila pero sabi ko eh iyon na lang natitirang karapatan ng mga tao ko ng mga mangingisda pero ang sinasabi ko lang sa kanila na karapatan niyo ang pumili ng inyong mga gustong ilagay sa pwesto pero ang sinasabi ko sa kanila ganito sa tingin niyo sino yung tumutulong at makatulong sa atin na magampanan natin at ma ma, 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 ma magkaroon ng katuparan yung ating mga pangarap bilang mangingisda doon tayo mm -hmm. yun po okay Mila Del, could, could you uh, 
tell us what is the gist of uh, Cardodoy's response. And I think uh, Ms. Georgette is here. Okay. Sige, go ahead, Milibel. PJMC is apolitical. Okay. They do not have any political inclinations. Whoever is in the power, as long as they, as long as those authorities are doing what is the mandate of their office, as long as they, they have the clear vision and direction for the coastal environment, environmental protection and conservation. The organization is with them because it would be very um, uh, difficult for them to side a political uh, party or group since the political landscape in our locality is, you know, uh, different. So they have to, they have to stand what is really their principle as an organization. So as an organization, they are not into supporting a certain a certain political uh, people, but uh, as an organization, it's the leaders who has to who have to support for the organization. Actually, that's what's happening in PJMC because we've been with uh, mainly political local leaders. There are some biases, but they stand, they sustained because the government, the local government can do, cannot do anything but to support this strong organization. So they make it clear to the local government and to the, and to the uh, government as a whole that they are, this, this kind of organization is very clear on their, on their quest to prepare a better and safe environment not for them, not just for them, but for the whole community. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Biladel. I think it's the first statement is apolitical. Uh, follow through, Doc, uh, Ms. Ancolada, yes? I think you are you are twin sister of, somebody said here, of Ms. Georgette. All right. <laughs> okay, thank you for joining us. Go ahead. See, mix ko na lang. Dr. Koma, masabin pilakadikada ng agi sa inyong lugar karon and you know being NGO at PO pero sooner or later he realized ng kinahanglan yun mo ambak yun sa politika because kung you leave the politics to the politicians unsa na lang so in fact I had a question to Dr. Koma what compelled him to ano and I am Kadudoy nga, how do you see it? Pila kadikada, tulo kadikada na kung imong i-scoreboard plus minus no and the politicians, um, unsa ang atong, ano ang maasahan natin sa kanila eventually? Dili ba, kinanglan usab nga two tracks ang atong pan. One is to professionalize being fisher folk, but also kanang politics is too important to leave to the politicians. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's bring in Dr. Koma. Kadudoy, before you give your thoughts, which I think you already, you know, and Miladel explained it so well. Let's ask Dr. Koma, why politics and what is the benefit of, in for your advocacy, for your movement, Dr. Koma? Uh, it's a good, <laughs> a good uh, point for discussion and, uh, and sharing. Uh, as you may know, I, I started my career as a, as a agronomist. I was teaching at the university, and I uh, resigned from university. I focus work on the with the NGOs, with the grassroots, and later later on in 2016, uh, together with other uh, NGO leader, uh, community leader, we we start the the political party we call the grassroots uh, democratic party. Uh, there were many reasons, and one of them we we, we see that the the old politicians they just like fighting each other, you know, to for their own uh, popularity, for their own power, for their own group, and uh, a lot of 
thing uh, has been happening to the farmer, to the fish all to the uh, simple people. And a lot of uh, simple people, they are, uh, they want to talk about politics. They, 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 you know, they don't have the courage. Uh, they fear, live in a fearful uh, 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 setting. And uh, uh, people are very, very, very reluctant to participate in uh, politics, even at the local politics. Uh, people are not, uh, have, do not have the courage to uh, challenge uh, our leader to be more accountable uh, so that they can uh, fulfill their mandate uh, to serve the people. And the reason is that uh, we, 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 we like to build an example model. Now we're talking about the model of Kadodoy in the Mongrel uh, community. I was working on the model of organic farming community. So why we, we don't build a model of democratic governance in any community, in any commune, or in any barangay, like you say in the Philippines. So we have commune as a local uh, government. So we want to start to 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 give an example uh, how democratic government works, how people can uh, participate in local politics, how people can uh, select a good local leader, and how to make the local leader, the village chief, the community. Uh, to work together for the benefit of the community, not for the people at the top. That we call a bottom-up approach. Uh, uh, that we call a empowerment of, of a, a local citizen, a farmer, and so on. And when when we engage mm. the farmer to involve in politics, it's not only about about farming. We call uh, the problem of the farmer, the fisher fall, and the villager is not only about farming. There is uh, many issues about the health, about the education of their children about the track, about the road access, and about the freedom and so on. And this can be solved if there is political leadership that uh, they promote and uh, support this kind of environment. And we can see that uh, our local government, our local politicians, they just listen to the top that we call uh, follow by the top-down approach. So we have to go from the bottom-up approach to challenge uh, the, uh, the top-down approach to bring more good example, as I said before, about how uh, democratic government works. And when we, we talk in Cambodia, that people uh, always say that, oh, if we we, 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 we read example from other country, they say, ah, other country, how can you, how you compare to other country? So, so, so if so like this, so why we don't make it an example in our own country in Cambodia? So how uh, democracy can work, how uh, uh, every ordinary citizen can involve in politics, and uh, how we to how we to uh, simply simplify the way we work with the uh, with the people with the farmer by by setting good example. So while I, I myself, uh, many people consider consider me like a VIP, like <laughs> like people from the national from the top something like that. But I I try to simplify myself, go down to the people, make it simple. Uh, so that you can reach the people, and and this is you you do it by example. If you want to, you have to to you want to reach people. You want to work with people with the other people. You have to simplify the way you are working with people, and you you have to build more and more uh, local leaders like this. It's not like you become politician and you become high class, and you I know you are you are like VIP something like this. So you cannot solve the problem. Because we are human beings, yeah, we are the same, but we have more, we have different role and responsibility in, in doing something for our, uh, our society. The farmer, they have their role, their responsibility, the policemen, their, their, their role, their responsibility, the commune chief have their role, their responsibility. But to make sure that everyone uh, doing their work uh, properly and everyone can work together, respect uh, each other. And especially in, 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 in Cambodia, we are talking about how we, we, we uh, because people try to nurture the culture of hate and, 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 and discrimination, you know? So why? If you have the freedom to, to choose which political party, you have the freedom to believe in whatever you think is good for the society. Uh, but, uh, but we have to discuss, we have to debate, and we decide whatever is good for, for us. It's not like uh, someone to be support uh, to, to be in one group or one party, you see that it's the they are bad, they are national traitor or something like this. It's not good. It's not a good example for our young generation. So in short, 
uh, we want to 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 like uh, my work before in organic farming, so we want to set up a, a good example how uh, democratic government uh, can work, can benefit uh, the people, how we can create a new political culture that people can live together, work together in spite of uh, diversity of uh, belief, diversity of uh, opinion, diversity of uh, uh, vision, and so on. And we can work together, live together in, 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 in harmony. And there is also a good impact because we participate in the in the last local election in in, in three commune. So uh, we, we we got some people to be the uh, commune councillor. Even we that did not get a majority to lead commune, but we set a good example uh, in, in this commune. And we try to uh, uh, to uh, uh, abolish the culture of division among people, among villagers, by such a, a good example. And we try to complete a good policy, a good idea, and action. Yeah? It's not just talking, mm -hmm. not just complaining, not just criticizing, but do something that is uh, that the people see that oh, we are we are really doing something that is good for the people. So that we that we compete each other, but need not compete for, for our own benefit, compete for the benefit of the public as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think I, I'm sure that we are, we are now in the right mm -hmm. direction, but it takes time, maybe 20 years, 30 years, but you have to go step by step from one commune mm -hmm. to one commune, because in Cambodia, we have more, more than 1,600 communes. But if you start mm -hmm. successful in one commune, so it can be replicated in thousands of communes. Another. I was thinking. Mm -hmm. Like barangay. Yeah, yeah, From like one that. barangay to the next barangay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. thank you, Dr. Koma. I think uh, the difference between politicians and, and becoming a leader no, uh, is very clear in the message of Dr. Koma. Sige po, Kadodoy, may gusto po kayong sabihin. Gusto ko lang susugan yung nabindi na panong kanina na yung of na ano, kami ba ay uh, uh, siyempre kailangan din nating makipalubilo sa mga sistema pangpolitika para kasi wala naman tayong pwedeng isa, isa yan sa mga ano abokasya namin na sana itong aming uh, ginagawa ay ma-adapt ito na, ma, na system na maisama doon sa mga agenda pangpolitika or gawan siya ng batas para Uh, it, anong ginagawa namin talaga ay ma-include doon sa mga lagyan siya ng palisiya para magkaroon siya ng sustainable uh, uh, program for the official folk. Kaya kami din kahit sa KGMC, sabi ko kanina kami sa KGMC, yun ang mga pinipili namin in advocacy na sino yung makapagdala sa aming uh, mga programa doon kami. Pero hindi, hindi, na kaila, hindi kaila, uh, kailangan talaga namin na, ano, na sumama doon sa mga Uh, malalaking mga grupo na makapagdala din ng aming boses kasi kung kami lang din sumahirap yung makamit yung mga national uh, advokasya natin kaya kami kay GMC ay mayroon din kaming mga sinasaliyang malalaking mga grupo sa national na mga pusher po na mga magsasaka o mga kooperatiba para itong aming advokasya ay madala doon sa isang uh, party ng isang uh, mambabatas o isang partido na baka ilubosot, so doon kami maka-contribute. Yun po ang ano ang ginagawa namin. Kailangan talaga na ang intervention din talaga ng mga politisyan o ng, ng ating mga nasa gobyerno na dapat pakita nila ito para madala doon sa mas mataas na level at baka mabigyan siya ng, ng programa sa pamagitan ng, ng batas. Pag, alam kasi namin, pag batas na yan, so So may pundo na siya so ma-include ma siya doon sa taon ng programa so makarating talaga sa sa amin. So kailangan din namin yan hindi na ayaw na sa ayaw namin sa mga politiko. Kailangan namin sila in the in the right way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's the message. No need to translate. <laughs> you will partner with them but maybe not become one of them. Okay, okay, enough said of politics. I think as a one comment here, there are many other ways to engage. Uh, I like to read the, the comment of French uh, Vibar, other than politics, there are platforms for engagement of community leaders within the system. Very true. At the LGU level, sector-based, etc. 
And uh, yes, continue what you're doing. Barangay per barangay, the ripple effect will spread. Kadodoy. All right. Another question. Is there anyone raising uh, uh, his or her hand from the floor? Or I would uh, read a couple of questions from the chat box. From uh, Dr. Angel Alcala. Angel Alcala is our Magsaysay Award. The end. A, an expert, marine, marine protector, all the way from uh, Dr. Alcala. I think you are in, um, if I'm not mistaken, you're, you're in, is it Cagayan de Oro? I don't, hey, Dr. Angel Alcala, are you there in the audience? I'm here, Angel. Okay, so sabi niya, uh, Kadodoy. Dr. Angel Alcala to. I want to congratulate Kado Doy. Uh, ang question niya po, ano po ang impact? What is the impact? But there you are, Dr. Alcala. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh my goodness. Ito na po ang mga kasama ninyo, Kado Doy. Ang mga magagaling na mga marine protector. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, well, I... Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Kadodoy yes. for his uh, important work on the mangroves because mangroves are becoming scarcer and scarcer every year. Uh, so, uh, but we know that mangroves contribute very much to fishery production and uh, it's important therefore to conserve them because we don't have very much mangroves in the country. So my question is, how much is the impact of the project on the amount of fish and other resources harvested in the area in terms of tons uh, every year or something like that? So, you know, we'd, we'd like to have the impact of your protection scheme, which is very good. See, excellent uh, method. We use that also in coral reefs. You empower the communities mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to be involved in protection. Number one, yeah, important in, in importance in marine conservation. So I'm asking you, how much really does your project impact on the marine resources being harvested in the area? Thank you. Sige pa. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Angel Alcala, one of my yeah. colleagues in Ramon Magsaysay. Uh, as an Thank award. you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the, the one uh, significant yeah, impact or the uh, big impact of the mangrove and uh, marine conservation, uh, yung ano, uh, dati kasi yung example na lang, talaba. Nung maliit pa yung aming mangroves, ang, ang talaba namin ay hindi masyadong sustainable, maraming bumibili, pero ang nakaharvest namin ay sa isang araw o sa isang uh, harvestan lang ay umabot lang ng mga 200 kilograms tapos hintay ulit. Sa so, pagdami that's ng mga... Very, that's every year or every six months or every month? E, every six months. E, every six months, yan. Pero pa, ng pagdami ng mangroves tulad ngayon, sa lawak na ng mangroves, ay nakapag-harvest na kami sa isang araw at tuloy-tuloy yun, uh, na 700 kilograms of talaba alone. Wow. Yan. Isa yan nga siya nakatulog sa amin during this pandemic. Parang nung nagkaroon ng mga lockdown, lockdown hindi namin randa, ramdam yun kasi nandun kami nagtatanim ng talaba tapos nag-harvest, nag-process. Isa yan. At yung mga nawala, walang dati na mga nawala dati na mga uh, marine species tulad ng pagkawala ng asoos, ng alimasag at yung uh, white mallet yung isaw ay bumalik. Dati uh, wala nang nahuhuli nun kasi isang araw minsan 3 kilos na lang sa loob ng walong oras na pangungisla. Ngayon isa hanggang tatlong oras lang kaya nilang kumuha ng mga 25, 7 kilos hanggang 25 kilos sa loob ng isa hanggang tatlong oras lang. Ngayon, uh, dahil doon yung mga dating barong-barong na, na bahay pero ngayon, hanggang ngayon, barong-barong pa rin, pero may appliance sa loob. Ah, may, may, may satellite. May, may kung ano-ano. Ah, pero yung bahay nila, medyo ano na, parang buhok natin makintab kasi yero na eh. 
Tapos, <laughs> yung mga disagwan on, ay, uh, lahat, di, mang, di bangkang di motor na. Oh. So, yun ang mga epekto. At ang, ang pinakamatindi talaga, uh, pagdating sa harvesting, kasi yun ang pinakaminatanong ni Dr. Al Alcala, yung, ano talaga, yung mga shilti sa lugar, yung alimasag, may, may, may alimasag, Uh, crab meat picking kami dito sa loob ng barangay. Sabi ko bakit dito niyo na itinayo? Dapat doon 'yon sa sa ano sa sa sentro sa sa lungsod. Sabi niya, ay dito yung source dito kami magtatayo kasi malapit na sa source. So dati wala 'yan. So 'yan ang mga nagiging magandang impact ng ng protection of mangroves and marine resources. Sa lain sa mga example, doktor. Salamat po. Nako, kado do ay kailangan bumisita kayo sa Siliman University, Dr. Alcala, you're still there in yes. Siliman? Yeah. I have a laboratory uh -oh. in Siliman. At may laboratory. Yes. At uh, sana maimbitahan niyo Dr. Alcala, Kadodoy, and his colleagues to visit Siliman University and learn from what has been done, no? the efforts of Dr. Alcala to protect, protect the last frontier. The last frontier and our and the uh, coral reefs napakaganda po napakaganda thank you so much for your time dr alcala and we will reconnect thank you. reconnect yeah. with you at some point again thank you so much uh, a couple more questions uh, from uh, forest foundation philippines uh, maybe to all the panelists uh, and then to kadudoy There is an increasing population now, and it is always a challenge to the sustainability of mangroves, coastal resources, and, and other res natural resources. So increasing population and uh, what we have no, in terms of our resources. So what is your insight on how can population increase the balance between population increase and natural resource management? from Eric of uh, Eric Buduan Forest Foundation Philippines anybody from our panel and may huli ka na kadodoy uh, Dr. Primavera or Flor uh, please chime in the balance between increasing population and the uh, uh, use of natural resources Dr. Koma also if you if you want to put in your two minutes uh, uh, insight on this question. Go ahead, Dr. Primavera. Uh, first, greetings to Eric. Um, Eric, yung mga tanong mo. Yung population, if the environment improves, tapos incomes improve, no? Yung kagaya nung sinabi ni Kaduduy na kahit barong-baro pero marami ng appliances, ganun. Or then, TV na yan. So, lilit na yung pamilya nila, no? Kasi, kasi yung oras nila, manunood na sila ng TV. I mean, it is not as simple as that, pero with increasing income, uh, family sizes uh, decrease. Ganun. And then, the pressure on the environment also decreases. Plus, yung, ano, yung education, tumataas yung educational level, no? So, um, It, it, it follows and um, with education din comes the enlightenment yung sinabi ni Kadudoy na ma-aware yung mga kabataan sa climate change no? yung, kasi climate change yung consumption sige lang bili ng bili ng ano tapon ng tapon ganun so including uh, population sizes family sizes yun so Eric <laughs> Siguro wala pa dyan ang Pilipinas, so hindi mo pa nakikita. Pero hopefully, uh, pag nag-i-improve ang environmental conservation and then rural livelihoods improve, incomes improve, uh, family sizes uh, will, will go down. Uh, okay. okay. Dr. Koma, do you want to say something about how do you create that balance? increasing population and uh, use of natural resources? Uh, yeah, it's a, a good question. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's also the question about leadership and innovation process. Mm -hmm. and you, 
this is a always a challenge for us how to ensure this balance and we believe that there is uh, unlimited uh, potential for us to utilize the resource for the long term benefit of the people of the community as long as you keep on innovation and this is a process so people keep on improving the way they are interacting with the soil the way they are working together and i think there is a, a lot of possibility to do this and uh, we, we don't see a, a limitation it's just limitation in our cell uh, so i mean our capacity uh, uh, our skill and knowledge our the way we cooperate with each other to improve uh, uh, the, the use of resources like we are working in the farming like sri organic farming we keep on improving uh, increasing productivity uh, improving the efficiency, efficiency improving the price of the product and so on so we still continue to benefit uh, from this kind of innovation process yeah. mm -hmm. continue to innovate and yeah. continue to give back of course yeah, to yeah. Give back. yeah that's what kadodoy said Sabi nyo kadodoy kanina. Para it works like a bank no yeah. you, know, you withdraw you have to deposit yeah like you work on the soil you are continue to extract the soil but you have to give back uh, to the soil you have, uh, uh, you if you cut the tree you have to plant the tree you know you have to reforest and keep it you know from generation to generation if you just extract your resource without mm -hmm. uh, giving back uh, uh, so you cannot ensure the balance yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and sustainability no we are not into extractive uh, way okay Thank you so much, Dr. Koma and Dr. Jurgen. And Kadudoy, may gusto ka bang sabihin dun sa question ni Eric? Uh, oh, magandang hapon sa ating kasamaan si Sir Eric. Uh, actually, kasama ko yan dun sa uh, author ng Sunrasya Alba Propagation ng Pagatpat uh, Seedlings. Uh, uh, seed, uh, uh, propagation sa mangroves. Uh, for his foundation, isa sa mga unang tumulong talaga sa amin uh, from national level. Kaya lumawak yung aming <coughs> pagtatanim ng mangrove. Pero doon sa tanong ay tam tama yun kasi taon-taon uh, 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 lumalawak, lumalawak yung ating uh, population uh, especially on the coastal area. Lalong-lalo na ito nga yung pagdating ng, ng pandemic. Uh, dahil yung mga dating hindi mangingisda, nangisda na ngayon. So na, at na, na Nung nang nakatira sa butok, maba, bumaba dahil wa, hindi sila makagalaw, hindi naman sila makalabas with the municipality noon. Ay, ang madali na nilang nangahadap buhay o sideline o pagkakitaan, yung pangingisda, lalo-lalo sa lugar namin. Pangalawa, ito pa yung maliban doon sa natural growth of population, ito pa yung may mga programa tayo na pinapauwi yung mga, ano, mga ibang tao pinapabalik sa, sa lugar. E, sa amin ngayon, isang pressure yan. Pero ang advokasya namin noon pa, dahil to 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 address the the population growth especially in the coastal area ay uh, hihikayat, hihikayat namin yung aming mangingisda na huwag palaging umasa sa panghuli ng isda uh, kailangan nating iwa ibawasan yung ating uh, fishing uh, pressure or palagi yung nag-extract o naghuli lang ng isda dapat may ano tayo may ginagawa tayong pagkabuhayan haba uh, sinusundan natin yung lumulubong pangangailangan ng pagkain, lumulubong pangangailangan ng mga tao. So kaya napopromote kami ng hindi yung pangingisda. Lalo ako at itong mga kasamahan namin dati, ako may sampung uh, baklad ako yung extracting uh, device of uh, uh, a kind of fishing. Ngayon, hindi na ako nag, nag ano nag uh, nangingisda uh, uh, ano araw-araw. Uh, ano na lang, sideline na lang kasi may tal ang pinupromote kasi namin yung mga tal talaba culture, yung mga aquaculture uh, project like talaba farming, uh, fish kids farming. So yung pag aquaculture. Pangalawa, yung mga non uh, extractive or uh, fishing uh, activities like na mga gardening, yung mga skill development, yung tuturuan na sino yung magandang mag mag magmason or magpanday. So pinagpatrabaho natin doon sino yung Uh, mag magandang gumawa ng bahay yung mga panday. So, binibigyan natin sila ng mga uh, enhancement skills training and binibigyan ng mga support sa, sa mga tools nila para makapagtrabaho sila para hindi na lang lahat araw-araw nangingisda. Dahil sa lumulubo yung ating mangingisda o populasyon, 
So ang 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 ating dagat hindi naman yung lumalaki instead lumiliit pa yan dahil may mga ginagawa din tayo mga protection or mga sunification era na bawal mang isda doon yung mga marine protected area. So yun ang mga isa sa mga ano at uh, pangatlo yung support talaga ng gobyerno na magkaroon ng mga value adding uh, uh, projects on marine uh, resources pero ang kulang natin mga facilities tulad ng mga cold storage, mga value adding uh, facilities, yung mga processing Uh, yung mga service uh, yung tulad mga daingan yung mga uh, mobilization magbibinta kami ng mga isda namin doon sa malayo so at least maraming mag-employ doon so hindi sila mangingisda kundi mag mag magnegosyo yon yon ang mga kailangan natin ngayon para ma masunda na natin yung lumalawak na populasyon at uh, hindi lahat nangingisda yon po okay so i think the way to sustain to a sustainable <coughs> Uh, resources is to create more skills, no? Build capacities. Other than if you are in the in the coastal communities, not just fishing uh, capacity, but other capacities. Napakaganda po ang nasabi niyo na you they can do uh, 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 they can be a farmer, no? Magplant. They can plant rather than just go fishing. And then I think that is the the point also raised by the other panelists that uh, build capacities of people living in the coastal communities so that they just don't rely on one resource. Uh, thank you very much, Kado Doy. I think uh, I'm afraid we won't be able to cover all the questions uh, that have been posted in the Q&A box. Uh, we have already exceeded our time. We really appreciate everyone who participated in our Q&A. And we apologize to those who were able to ask their questions. Uh, we will now move to hearing the synthesis of our esteemed panelist, Professor Randy David. Thank you very much, uh, Chiclet. Uh, this has been an extremely enriching and inspiring discussion, um, as everyone will agree, I'm sure. Uh, I think I can only give the highlights of today's session to the best of my ability. We began with the actual experience of one individual, Kadodoy, and an exploration of the natural and social world in which he grew up and continues to make a living. From his description of the gradual destruction of the mangrove forests around which his livelihood revolves, we gained a deeper understanding of the environmental forces and the sociological realities that put his livelihood and that of his community in grave peril. The existential problem he faced is both unique and universal at the same time, as we have seen this afternoon. The challenges that Kado Doi confronted when he decided to take action to defend and preserve the very foundation of his fishing community's livelihood were complex and multiple. The mangrove forests that protected their villages and provided them with their livelihood had been hollowed out, plundered, and destroyed. It needed desperately to be replanted, rehabilitated, nurtured, and protected from persistent threats. This wasn't as easy as it first seemed. First of all, he had to organize his fellow fisher folk, which meant that he had to make them see the interconnected problems that they collectively faced as he himself perceived them. Second, the solution that he proposed or that he had in mind was a long-term one to grow and bring back to life the mangrove forest, whereas the need for economic survival that they faced every day was immediate and, and urgent. Sabi nga, isang kahig, isang tuka, ang kareniwang buhay ng mga mangingisda. With the passage of time, he had to contend with the real challenges of demoralization and loss of interest, even among his own members in KGMC. I think anyone who has ever ventured into community organizing for the purpose of what Dr. Koma calls community empowerment would have seen this at one time or other. You need much more than a vision or a mission. 
as Dr. Koma reminded us, you have to build capacity and the ability to sustain and replicate uh, the model of action that, that you have uh, uh, designed. It is a task that really never ends. One that above all requires in, in, in the leaders enormous integrity and a capacity to pass the lessons on to the next generation. And then there was the persistent danger posed by illegal fishers and those who continued to cut the remaining mangrove cover, sometimes by individuals from their own neighboring communities. There was also the threat posed by the rich and powerful who did not care about the long-term effects of their predatory ways on the coastal ecosystem. But perhaps most important of all, as Dr. Primavera tells us, was the problem, problem of sourcing mangrove seedlings of the right kind, of propagating them properly and planting them in the right places. You, you need more than conventional, conventional folk knowledge. You need science. Uh, and a practical-minded person like Kadodoy, science of the appropriate kind. The scale and magnitude of the problem when seen at the national level is certainly forbidding. If the intent is to maximize synergies, to quote Dr. Georgine Primavera, you need relevant policies, which unfortunately uh, are not consistently pursued or continually pursued by politicians at the national level. Given all of these, it is difficult to imagine how anyone could have persisted in the face of these adversities and challenges. Clearly, Katadoy has been blessed with a passionate stubbornness that is softened by a charismatic sense of humor, irrepressible good cheer, and humility. He never lost heart. He never gave up on his fellow fisher folk. He kept faith in the intrinsic goodness of others and the power of institutions to lend support in the direst of times. He drew encouragement and a strong will to make a difference, particularly from the support he received from people-oriented scientists and the various institutions that saw meaning in what he was doing, like the Savior Agricultural Extension Service Foundation or the Peace and Equity Foundation. He was likewise validated in his continual belief in the readiness of local government officials and government agencies to recognize the value of what he was doing and to help him in his effort. Without any doubt, it is this kind of single-mindedness and heroism from the margins a tireless and defective leadership, as Flora reminds us, that is participatory, coupled with the collective will of civil society, academic institutions, and governments that ultimately may decisively change the way we relate to one another and to nature itself in general. Kadodoy's persistence shows us that no effort, no matter how small or how humble, is ever wasted in the crucial fight to save our planet and its diverse ecosystems against the ravages of human abuse, neglect, and of climate change. We are grateful to Kadodoy for the shining example that his life has been, for which he is being justly recognized by the Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation, a true teacher of the people. He has unselfishly shared his lessons with his community and the rest of the world. But because the world we live in is complex, sooner or later, the other problems of the larger society will probably impinge on effective leaders like Kadadoy. Politics is just one of them. If he is not drawn to endorse politicians who are running for public office, he may himself be challenged to take on the challenge of a political career in the future. As Dr. Koma reminded us, this is a responsibility that cannot easily be shirked if it presents itself. This was raised in the Q&A portion, but we may need a longer discussion for this issue. I hope that suffices. Thank you, everyone. 
Oh my gosh, Randy. I mean, that was just so beautiful. I mean, I think that that synthesis and how you were able to capture the essence of what we did this afternoon was just so right on point and so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so, Thank you. so very much. Thank you. Um, you know, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the second lecture um, of the Ramon Magsaysay Foundation so far for this year. Um, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work behind the scenes, putting it all together. But I have to tell you that after listening to Ka Dodoy, after listening to all the people that were part of this so engaged, and of course with Randy, putting it all together and synthesizing it, parang lahat ng pagod na naman nawala. You know, all of our, you know, all of yeah. our hours and hours of toil and talking and planning uh, has all disappeared. Because in an, in, you know, in a situation where we're in right now, it's COVID. There is so much anxiety. There is so much fear. There is so much hopelessness that it's when you come together within, you know, with a group of people like this that have never given up on the environment, even if it is so difficult, have never given up on their communities, have never given up on their families and their friends. At yung walang iwanan. You know, we never leave anybody behind and we all are in this together. And the continuous wanting to fight for what is true, for what is just and for what will be, a, you know, for the betterment of everyone really, uh, you know, enlightens me myself and inspires me. So I just want to thank you all, each and every one of you so much for being a part of this afternoon. But I also, you know, and it's just not from me, but this is on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Ramon Magsaysay Foundation and the laureates mm -hmm. who have joined us this afternoon. We really want to thank everybody for being a part of this. And I'm just so happy to also acknowledge that not only Randy David, one of our board of trustees, joined us this afternoon, but we're also joined by present and past trustees. So we have Miss Cheche Lazaro with us this afternoon. Kadodoy, pinakikinggang ka. Ni, uh, of course, ni Professor Ernie Garilao, ni Dr. Shell Habito, ni Emily Abrera. Mr. Ramon Del Rosario is also with us this afternoon. We also have a former um, trustee, Mr. Senen Bakani, who is also with us. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. We have seven other Ramon Magsaysay awardees listening to you. So not only do we have Dr. Coma, we have Lilia De Lima, we have Dr. Aris Alip, we have Ernesto Domingo, we have our PETA president, Ms. C.B. Garucho. Of course, we had Mr. Angel Alcala. Um, and then also uh, from the Facebook audience, we can see Ms. Grace Padaka, Aid V. Oki, I hope I'm saying this correctly, Idzenga as yeah. well is with us. And Ankhana Nilapaji is also from with Thailand. us. From Thailand. From Thailand. There you go, from Thailand. So, hello to all of you. We can't wait to see you all in our reunion, 65th anniversary of the Ramon Pagsaysay <laughs> Foundation, where we hope we can all gather together and hug and, and, and hold hands. But in the meantime, this will have to do that we are sending you our warmest regards uh, and gratitude for your continuing support of the foundation. But aside from that, I, please allow me to extend our gratitude to some key individuals who joined us today. It takes a village, as they say, to create the change that we want to see in this world. And there's so many people to thank. So we tried capturing them all in an art card, which will be shown later on. If I don't do that, it'll take another half hour for me to acknowledge everyone that was part of this. But please, anyone interested in staying on to say their personal greetings to Kadodoy later on will be allowed by our tech team to do so immediately after the lecture. So just raise your hand if you want to be placed up here in the panel as well. But to Kadodoy's family, maraming maraming salamat. I'm sure you know you you know you have shared him with us, and we are so grateful. Sa inyong 
pag-share ng inyong papa sa amin. To the Cambodian Center for Study and Development in Agriculture in Cambodia, its founder, Dr. Koma, thank you, thank you. I know there were instances where we were talking in, in Visayan and in, in Tagalog, but you've been with us the whole entire time. Thank you. And of course, um, the network and partners of the Savior Agricultural Extension Service Foundation. Thank you for helping Kadodoy with his lecture and for the video. Please note though, and I want you to underline this, okay? This is just the beginning. This is not the end, okay? The beginning of many new partnerships and connections that Kadodoy and his team will hopefully start as a result of this lecture with all of you. We look forward. We want to hear your stories, okay? We want to hear from you. Tell us, give us testimonials of how you were inspired today and how you were ignited to recreate and innovate Kadodoy's work and his team, of course, in Sambuanga, Sibugay. So again, thank you, um, Kadodoy, for your commitment, for your passion and enthusiasm, and to our beloved 2021, um, you know, other Ramon Magsaysay awardees for your continued support, past and present. Thank you to all and to all our friends, mga kababayan natin sa Sibugay, sa Sambuanga. Damo gid, nga salamat sa inyong tanan. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Damo nga salamat sa inyong tanan. Dagang salamat sa Ramon Magsaysay Award Foundation and Family and also to our partners. Uh, <clears throat> ang dami nila damo dagang kay sila so you know uh, sa kay Sir Nestor kay Sir Ongge kay uh, Sir uh, Bobby Kalingo sa Sir Nonoy Sir Marlene uh, especially sa among governor isang bagsi buga at ang our mayor in Kabasalan thank you very much to all of you uh, Ma'am Miladel Ma'am uh, sa, sa tanang Ma'am uh, Mami <laughs> uh, dagang kayo salamat O, oh, Kadodoy, takot na takot ka na mag-lecture. O, oh, tignan mo yung lecture mo. Ang ganda-ganda. And oh, so and... many people are so, <laughs> you know, ang dami na inspire. So, thank you. A big milestone for you, for the team. We're so proud of you. Marie, take it away. I would like to invite everyone to stay and send your well wishes to Kadodoy in the chat box, in the comment section of the Facebook and uh, YouTube live stream. To start, may we request the board members and management of the Philippine um, Peace and Equity Foundation. The members of uh, Peace yes, and Equity I think Foundation. Yes, Sir Bobby. Yeah, we're here. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, uh, Hi, Bobby. Hi. Hi, 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 Susan. Good afternoon and congratulations to Kadodoy. We call him Tads. Congratulations, ah, uh, uh, 30 years. Mabuhay ka, Kadodoy. Uh, progress to your community. Mabuhay, mabuhay ka. At sa mga kasama natin dyan sa Kabasalan. Kita tayo. Kita tayo dyan. Mm -hmm. Salamat po sa Peace and Equity Foundation. Miss Marlene Ramirez is here. Uh, I don't know if Peter is here and, and Pia and Meg. The PF team have been supporting Kadodoy. Oh. Um, magkakasaba naman kayo. So, nag, nanood po sila ng inyong yeah. lecture. Uh, also to the family of, of Rer, uh, kahit bago lang sila pero malaking tulong nila sa mga pagdodocument ng ating mga ginagawa din. Yeah. Also, our partners from the Forest Foundation, Mr. Eric Buduan and Ms. Marjorie Pamplona. Yes, uh, on behalf of the Forest Foundation Philippines, uh, kami po ay bumabati ng uh, uh, mainit na congratulation kay Kadodoy sa kanyang grupo sa KGNC. Uh, alam ko uh, nakikita, nakikita natin itong ganitong uh, senaryo nung inumpisahin natin yung effort natin sa mangrove conservation. Uh, uh, laking uh, karangalan na kami naging uh, part din ng journey ninyo. Uh, maray pa pwede nating uh, 
pagdaanan uh, towards uh, successful uh, mangrove environment uh, conservation hindi lang po diyan sa Sibugay kundi sa ibang uh, parte ng Pilipinas. Uh, so kami po ay buhay babat sa inyo at uh, ingat mo kayo uh, iingat po tayo lagi. Salamat po. Yes, sir. We also have um, representatives from the CARD MI, MRI and uh, BFAR. Meron pa, CARD MRI. Nandiyan ba si Dr. Alip? CARD MRI po, Kadodoy, ay uh, magsaysay awardee at nagbibigay po sila microfinance. Napakalaking microfinance institution sa Philippines. Sa so, B-Farden at DNR, maraming salamat sa inyong mga tulong. Go ahead, Marie. Please recognize the others na lang. To continue with our acknowledgement, uh, we will show the slide of the partners and networks of the Ramon Magsisay Award Foundation. We would like to thank our participants, our network and partner institutions, Napakaraming partner institutions ang nagbibigay pugay sa inyo. Kada and of course, our Fisher Folk um, representatives from various organizations in Luzon, so Visayas, and Mindanao. Nako, mabuhay! Mabuhay ang lahat ng manging isda sa buong Pilipinas at Asia. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Agriculture and Forestry Sector, DNR, Department of Education, UP, Gawad Kalinga, and Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food food incorporated and also the various uh, members and faculty of um, different universities and local colleges in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Daming oh, nanood sa ilo. <laughs> Tinan mo naman yan ka, Dodoy. Pero talaga ha, gawin natin movement yung talagang magkaroon tayo ng mga professional fishermen and farmers talaga din yeah. sa buong Asia at Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maraming salamat sa mga akademya na tumulong sa amin, <laughs> lalo-lalo namin partners dito sa Buwanga Sibugay, sa KGMC yung uh, Ateneo di Sambuanga at uh, yung UOP uh, graduates like uh, Sir Felix Badon and Kulig. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we take one last photo of the ones who are still here? Please open your camera and uh, we'll take one last photo. Oh, Sir Angel Alcala is still here. Uh, friends from Forest Foundation, oh, Flora, thank you for staying from SACEFI. Tapos yung mga kasama nyo dyan, kadudoy, lapit sila sa inyo para makasama yung mga nasa likod mo. Sabihin mo, uh -huh. lapit sila. Oh, lapit pero kayo para, pero para magmas, distancing. <laughs> uh -huh. yan, yan. Uh, para uh, makita kayo uh, yung para mga makasama, officers uh, para and members. Para makasama kayong lahat sa, uh, ano, sa uh, video. Photo op. Okay, ready na ba dyan, Marie? Uh, sama ba si, ano, si Mami Miladel? Uh... Uh, Miladel. Mm -hmm. Ayan. At yung mga nandyan sa likod. Hawag namin dito, hawag namin dito pag hindi malinaw ay bingka ops, hindi na puto ops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We are taking photo. Three, two, one. And another one. Three, Two, one. Yan. Thank o, you so much. Photo, uh -oh. Habang nagpapapoto, ang susunod po namin webinar ay um, yun naman pong uh, si yung galing po sa Indonesia, Watchdog. Ito yung mga truth tellers na ganap ng mga taong nagsasabi ng totoo at hindi fake news. At meron din po tayong isa pa, si Dr. Firdusi Kadri of Bangladesh, who is bringing in vaccines, affordable vaccines, cholera, typhoid, uh, and gusto nating maging ganyan din tayo. And then the, the, the last one will be Dr. Stephen Mansi 
uh, for Southeast Asia that is talking about peace building and humanitarian work all over Asia. So for more information po sa lahat ng aming activities during the 63rd Ramon Magsaysay Awards Festival season, please ilike niyo po kami sa Facebook. Sumali po kayo sa amin sa Instagram, sa YouTube. Please check out our new website. It's www.rmaward.asia. Okay, so um, Marie, take it away. Maraming salamat again to everybody. Mabuhay ka, Kadodoy. Mahal ka namin. Yay, Kadodoy. Maraming salamat. At sa KGMC, sa Savior, marami pong salamat. We will see you soon. Thank you. Salamat sa tanang damang salamat. Muchas gracias. Mag-ingat po lahat. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you all for joining this webinar. Bye-bye. Uh, the certificate will only uh, be posted at the uh, chat box. And the